there is massive economic news coming in around the globe that does not bode well, obviously, in even the short and midterm. That's huge. needs to be covered. Uh, we have the controlled corporate media's death dance they're doing as they destroy what little bit of credibility they might have had left with somebody uh, running around desperately defending Hillary's health, uh, saying that it's sexist to even talk about it, saying we owe Hillary an apology. I mean, this would be comedic if it wasn't so real and so serious. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of articles talking about Democrats meeting in the DNC, talking about a replacement for Hillary. But then when I covered it last night, they have the establishment media come out and say, I'm making it up, even though I have a giant stack of mainstream news admitting these discussions are going on. So it's very schizophrenic what they engage in. Very, very bizarre. Very, very easy uh, to discredit. It, it's just wild. It's like they don't even bother explaining a lie from five minutes before when they say something completely new and then criticize you for being right. It's wild. And then we've also uh, got really the big issue that in every internal poll, Trump's been ahead all along. But a month or so ago, all of the propaganda, all the disinformation that Trump was way behind and that the, the, the nation had turned against him, some weak-minded people began to believe that was true, and so his lead narrowed in real scientific polls. And they did stuff like add 10 to 15 points in some polls, other polls only five points, more Democrats in the sampling uh, to create that uh, fraudulent reality. But despite all of that, Trump is a good five to 10 points ahead in fraudulent polls, and 10 to 15 points ahead in many internal polls that I know major political parties are doing. Trump's doing it, the Republicans are doing it separately, the Democrats are doing it, and that's why they are in full hysterical panic mode. Because the Republican Party's been criminal, and it's worked with the globalists, and it's very bad, and they've tried to block Trump. But the Democrats have been even worse, and when they don't secure the White House, all their crimes are going to start coming out, and, and their whole system uh, is in ashes, and a lot of them are going to prison. That's why they intend to steal the election. It's why they're federalizing it. It's why they're pulling out all the stops. It's why they're so wild-eyed, because the stakes, and I'm getting mega chills right now, just mega chills. My spirit is just on fire right now. This is such an in incredible, wow, incredible time to be alive, because I'm sitting here saying this, and it's so true. It's like, whoa, talk about edge of your seat. You talk about over the top. This is it. And I've been a bad boy about getting your phone calls the last few days because there's been so much news. I want to open the phones up specifically only today, at least when we first take calls, on Hillary's collapse, on Hillary's deplorables comment, how bad does that hurt her? And where you think this election is going, and do you think they'll try to substitute somebody else in? They're talking about Biden. They're even talking about Sanders. They're talking about Kane, Tim Kane. It's all coming up today. I'll give the number out at the start of the next segment. But specifically, if I'll just give it out now, I'm going to hang up on you if it's another subject because the calls just have gotten too out of control. People call in, talk about themselves, talk about uh, their buddies, talk about old beefs with people. This is not, you know, the uh, stratosphere hour. Uh, so some days I'm going to specifically say it's on this topic or that's it. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. You won't have to hold long on your calls very, very quickly. 800-259-9231. And let's do first-time callers or folks that haven't called in a few years at least. 800-259-9231. The vice president candidate, uh, Kane, has come out and attacked yours truly yesterday. And the alt media again, I guess because Hillary can't talk too well, he's parroting that. It's a big broadcast, a bunch of big guests. Please spread the word. This is historic. Yeah, every time Hillary has one of those seizures, if her attendants aren't there, she bangs her head. And she wakes the dead. Looks like mental health isn't helping her too much. You see, she's already dead in her soul. So, I guess there's no 
coming back from that. I talk about this a lot, but it, it, it just gets more and more intense as days and weeks and months and years go by for everybody. This world is so frantic. It's so wild. It's quite frankly so incredibly riveting and just edge of your seat excitement. And there's the good, the bad, and the ugly taking place all around us. We have the mainstream dinosaur media trying to prop Hillary up. We have them using every dirty trick of deception under the sun, and I'm learning about new forms of deception every day as they, I guess, invent new forms of evil, running around continually inventing new forms of evil. Uh, as the Bible says, we've got Google being caught on a daily basis censoring different Hillary terms, Clinton death lists terms, but like whack-a-mole, they have to stay in constant contact with the White House. This is all admitted uh, as they tweak what to censor. So for now, if you type in Hillary, uh, the top things that pop up are Clinton seizure, Clinton dead, Clinton age. But of course, uh, Google working closely to the White House, I'm sure will uh, stop the will of the people and uh, stop those being the top search. But despite the establishment media having the algorithms, the bots, the computers, and running the big systems, they are having their butts handed to them right now in the information war. So as Hillary told Congress four years ago, desperately trying to get propaganda legalized inside the U.S. and to get the CIA more than $20 million a year alone uh, to engage in war with the American people. And by the way, she got that money. Despite that, we are cleaning these globalist clocks. We are exposing the foreign multinationals and their agents and their operatives. And no amount of fancy propaganda, no amount of Internet kill switches can put Humpty Dumpty back up on the wall again. And I've always used the Humpty Dumpty analogy. I, I'm not using that because it fits so well, uh, but I am because it does fit so well. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put... Hillary Clinton's brain back together again. So it is uh, certainly historical. It's like something out of a Greek tragedy, out of fairy tales. There's a reason we have cliches and fairy tales and parables and legends, because real things like that happen over and over again. And all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Hillary Clinton and the Clinton crime family and the Bushes back up on their little pedestal again. Because Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall up, up high. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put that criminal piece of trash back together again. And it's just going to get more intense from here. The enemy's going to strike back in big and nasty ways. But no, throughout all of this, this is the animating contest of liberty that has always tested humanity's metal and i'm honored to be here and honored to know all of you of every race color and creed that are the human race who all bleed red blood and have a soul made by god let me just attempt to give you the news coming up this is so over the top the economic news over the top the russian news over the top the middle east news just it just absolutely over the top hundreds of mainstream publications from fox to cnn to the New York Times, to the Daily Mail, saying the Democrats are meeting to replace Hillary right now. We, we told you that yesterday because the Democrats were tweeting about it. People thought we made it up. Now it's in hundreds of papers. We don't make stuff up. We're wrong sometimes, not often. But have folks figured out yet? We say sensational stuff because the universe is sensational. Hundreds of billions of galaxies photographed by Hubble. Sensational. Hillary collapsing on the Benghazi 9-11 anniversary at Ground Zero. Sensational. Because reality is amazing. It's, it, it's crazier than non-reality. Truth is stranger than fiction. Truer words have never been spoken. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, the top Hillary search again, no matter what they do, is the fact of what's really going on with their health. We have a report by Kit Daniels, because I keep getting mobbed by emails and calls and friends and family going, she's wearing seizure glasses. Here's the brand. Here's the blue Zeiss lenses. I know. We've written about it for months. We've talked about it. And I'm not complaining. It's just people are really upset about this. 
You got articles up there on Infowars.com. Drudge has had the reports at DrudgeReport.com. The mainstream media is still ignoring it. That's how controlled they are, folks. But 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 here's the biggest one. I'm going to make a big deal out of this with a special message to her later uh, today. Because we have this Alex Witt, the same one on MSNBC that called me, quote, deeply racist with no evidence. And my lawyer said, yeah, you can win millions, but it'll take years and cost millions. Do you want to do this? And I said, no. She discredits herself making crap up like that. Alex Jones doesn't like Obamacare because he's deeply racist. I mean, this woman is a piece of work. She's a obvious narcissistic, power-tripping loon. Can you imagine the hell of being married to that woman? Now, I mean, this is Jezebel. And she's sitting up there, and over and over again, the last two days, she, we've got clips of her going, Hillary barely stumbled and wobbled a little. Big deal. It was super hot out there. I couldn't handle that heat. This woman's incredible. And then she doesn't show her fall down and be drugged into the vehicle, deceiving her viewers. And this is what they do system-wide on mainstream TV other than Fox. I mean, the control of them saying this is the, since they had to show the video because the new media showed it on Sunday. You know, they tried to shut it down and take it off YouTube and Google and the rest of it and Daily Motion and, and Facebook. Despite that, we went and licensed it. We paid for it so they couldn't stop us. Because sure, we can battle them in court for a few months or whatever, and then the issue's over. So I went ahead and paid up. Paul Watson did. Made the right move. I was asleep. It was like Sunday night, Monday morning, you know, at 2 a.m. when he bought the footage. I'd just gone to bed. And so they failed to say it didn't exist. First, it didn't exist. Okay? And... Then they just show you the first five seconds and not the next 15 where she falls. They have to pick her up. Her feet are under her being drugged. Her shoe comes off. The police, before the footage even came out, said, yeah, they threw her in the back of a van like a sack of meat. She totally collapsed. By the way, we have ABC News New York coming up saying she died. Now, obviously, that's a mistake. But when we called the uh, their offices yesterday... They said, well, it was in the teleprompter. Just like BBC said, we said Building 7 blew up and fell because it was in the transcript we were given. And I went and looked who gave them the transcript. It was Reuters. And I said, was it Reuters? And they go, we're not going to tell you. Five years later, they admitted Reuters told them Building 7 fell before it fell. The point is, is that somebody's writing these scripts that Hillary's already died. And then Bill Clinton is on Charlie Rose last night, and Hillary supposedly on CNN via phone completely freaked out. They say, well, if you're okay, can we send cameras? Oh, no, you can't do that. I mean, this is getting real suspicious by the moment. And a lot of folks say that doesn't look like her that comes out of the Chelsea's house and hugs a little girl. I think it does look like her. She just looks so much older now and so sick. Uh, I think that was the real Hillary Clinton. Folks are mad at me saying it wasn't a, bo a body double. LBJ had a body double. Other politicians have had them. I mean, the Russians were big into that. We know it goes on. I'm not saying it's not happening. All I'm telling you is, why would you put a body double that looks as sick as Hillary out there? That's all I'm saying. But listen, it's up for interpretation. As much as these people lie, Hillary could be dead, and they just put a body double in. Hell, put one in. Put a black lady in and say it's Hillary. The mainstream media lies so much, maybe put an Eskimo in with red hair or, or Ronald McDonald. And say, oh, Hillary always had red hair and a red nose and white skin and wore, you know, yellow shoes. Now, before the New York Times and Media Matters report on that, which they will, they deceive their viewers and listeners, that was called satire. But at a certain point, we're there, ladies and gentlemen, where they could have Ronald McDonald show up at the debates, be, let's say, six and a half feet tall, be wearing a striped shirt of a booby, a pirate, up there with his with his with his Michael Jackson gloves on, perving out, and 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 they'd say, "Shut up, sexist!" Hillary Clinton always has been a six and a half foot red clown. Now, getting serious, listen to this. This is not satire. Huffington Post: Clinton owed an apology from media for questioning health. They actually say that 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 that, that she's the picture of health and an incredible stamina. And then it goes on from there. Here's another one. We have another report here. Amon Poor cries sexism. Quote, can't a girl have a sick day? 
oh, she just got pneumonia while she's coughing the last few years and falling down, and then, and they've got a guy with an EpiPen standing next to her. Now, I'm going to get more into this later and play all these clips and break it down. I want to get to your phone calls first at the bottom of the hour. Next segment, I want to play these Trump clips where he is on the attack because we got Obama saying better clingers, but that's just audio. With Hillary, we have Hillary saying that half his supporters are deplorable, evil people. And then we've got the usual suspect, attack dogs, uh, running around uh, saying that, no, they're all horrible and basically aren't human. And this is their attitude, and this is where they stand. It's like Cuomo of New York last year saying, if you're pro-gun or pro-life, get out of the state. They said, you mean that? He goes, yeah, I'll have you arrested. Get out. You're not welcome here. These are authoritarian gangsters. And that's why we have the guy that wants to be the vice president. It's up on Infowars.com. We've got Mr. Kane coming after yours truly in another clip. We've got coming straight up. We're going to have to end the special tonight at midnight. And that is 30 to 40% off the super high quality storable food at InfoWarsStore.com. It is privately labeled, uh, the very same food from My Patriot Supply. We have their full selection uh, available as well. Already very, very, very high quality, very low price, made fresh, last 25 years. But by private labeling, the very same food on the very same shopping cart, we're able to go 30 to 40% lower occasionally with sales. We're always about 5 to 15% lower, depending on what specials they're running. But InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com, 30 to 40% off on high-quality storable foods. Take advantage of that today, and your purchase supports the broadcast. We're also going to end the special today with Hillary for Prison T-shirt at cost. $9.95, that includes shipping. The shirt costs us about $5, handling and shipping costs us about $5, hence the $9.95. There are two free Hillary for Prison bumper stickers in each order and a citizen rule book. That's why I'm actually having to end the special because I'm actually losing money on it, not just breaking even, they explained to me. And when you sell tens of thousands of them, it becomes a big issue for our budget. Uh, so uh, the shirt will go back to 1995, and then we're coming out with a new design in a couple of weeks, and that will be it for this design, this third permutation of the Hillary for President shirt. But thank you all for your support. You can pay 1995 on the site. If you'd like, there's a button there where you can pay full price and we get $10 for each order of profit to help fund the operation, or $10 to go to the company to run the company. Uh, not, not, I guess, a profit, but the point is it helps fund the operation. So thank you all for your support. And this is the dominant meme of this election cycle, and it's having a devastating effect. We are the info war. You are the heart of the info war. Now, your phone calls, John, Brent, Steve, Andrew, Chris, and others are coming up at the start of the next segment. We also have Hillary clearly on video being given a medical exam uh, for neurological problems, for seizures, not for pneumonia. Drudge Report is linked to that video and that report uh, as well from Infowars.com. That's coming up. It's just an orgy uh, of truth coming out. I mean, the, the, the dam has broken. Um, we are seeing historical things happen. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, obviously, the big issue that, that Trump's been hammering the last four or five days and not even letting uh, her collapse distract him, though it's important, uh, is that Hillary Clinton thinks that half of his supporters are deplorable, which ties into the bitter clinger. She wants to be president, but she hates the American people. Notice that Trump loves the American people and wants to bring us together. But globalists have this imperial attitude. Here's Hillary. Talking about how she sees us as deplorable. Then I'll go to the Trump clip. But here's, here's the original clip of Hillary. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. And unfortunately, there are people like that. So, we all know that's made up, that's exaggerated, that's spun. The Democratic Party are the ones all about race, all about what group you are now. They are despicable. Their own memos have come out that Soros wants racial division to control us. We have them. And Trump ought to run TV ads showing the DNC and the Soros and move on emails where they're coordinating all this crap and all this division. Now, let's go to Trump. He's been responding a lot, but here's one of his latest. Uh, he says, uh, Hillary looks down on proud Americans as subjects for her rule. 
and that's exactly what they want you to be poor under their control that is the heart of their cloward and piven strategy after months of hiding from the press hillary clinton has revealed her true thoughts that was her true thoughts she revealed herself to be a person who looks down on the proud citizens of our country as subjects for her rule. She views it as her rule. Her comments displayed the same sense of arrogance and entitlement that led to violation of federal law as Secretary of State. Hide and delete her emails. Nobody's ever done anything like that before. Put classified information in the reach of our enemies lie to Congress and sell government favors and access through her foundation. It's the same attitude that explains why Hillary Clinton refuses to take accountability for the deadly disaster she helped to create in Iraq, in Syria and in Libya. To this day, she won't take accountability for her role in unleashing, and that's what happened, unleashing ISIS. Total Veritas. Just, I'm just totally nodding my head here as he says all that. We have more of these clips coming up and your phone calls straight ahead on the other side. But he's a globalist. America stands in her way. Look, America's got plenty of problems, but it is one tenth as evil as globalism. Globalism is the Antichrist system. So if you just joined us, we're going to your phone calls here in just a moment. We just played a clip of saying Hillary looks down on proud Americans as subjects for her rule under globalism. That's what it is. It's the Antichrist system. And here's another clip. Hillary's disdain for America disqualifies her to be president. Absolutely true. Here it is. The disdain that Hillary Clinton expressed toward millions of decent Americans disqualifies her from public service. You cannot run for president if you have such contempt in your heart for the American voter. And she does. You can't lead this nation if you have such a low opinion for its citizens. Hillary Clinton still hasn't apologized to those she slandered. In fact, she hasn't backed down at all. She's doubled down on her campaign conspiracy and contempt. If Hillary Clinton will not retract her comments in full, I don't see how she can credibly campaign any further. Let's be clear. These were not offhand comments from Hillary Clinton. These were strong not at all. They were given also in an interview and probably a number of interviews. This is how they talk. These were lengthy, planned, and prepared remarks. It was perhaps the most explicit attack on the American voter ever spoken by a major party presidential nominee. Total disrespect for the people of our country. Clinton was using a very deliberate page from the Democratic playbook. Solomon's smearing key. someone with one of the names, you know, those names. In order to score, really, in order to scare, and I mean try and seriously scare them out of voting for change. And we're bringing change. She can't bring change. She's been doing this for 35 years. She's the opposite of change. Total veritas. And that's why I'm very careful when we play our own investigative reports around the country, or, or Mark Dice, who contributes uh, for us uh, out in uh, Southern California, that we show people saying, let's put gun owners and conservatives in forced labor camps and take their guns or let's kill gun owners or let's abort kids up to age three or we don't know who the vice president is i say specifically these people are brainwashed totally stupid because we have video of them i don't just say in general all the democrats are racist or all the democrats are bad people a lot of them actually mean well and have just been basically put into a cult but to come out and say specifically half of Trump supporters are racist, homophobes, Islamophobes, blah, 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 is just amazing. It's total divide and conquer. And she's trying to get her minions to basically be sicked 
on everybody else. This is how you divide a country. And Trump is actually unifying it. The first thing he had to do was say, look, but citizens get treated the best up front. We're not against anybody, but you've got to earn that. And they said, oh, this is racist. This is horrible. You can't go to any of those other countries and get that treatment. They'd laugh at you. We're a nation state. Globalism is erasing that. And then Trump goes further and says, I'm going to make it easier if people become citizens. It's too hard. It's stupid. Because the Democrats don't want people here legally that have all the right benefits but also pay the taxes because they want to drive the wages down. And so does the Republican leadership. They might even be worse than the Democrats long term on wanting to have a permanent underclass. So you know what? One thing the Democrats say to their constituents is true. A lot of these third world populations that are brought in from all over, Eastern Europe, super hardworking folks, Latin America, super hardworking folks on average, they are being exploited. Let's, 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 not, let's not miss words. They are being set up as a permanent underclass, and the latter is being removed, where it's very hard for them to become middle class because the globalists don't want a big middle class that's hard to manage by the elite, a big uppity middle class. The number one enemy of the ultra-rich is nouveau riche, the new rich. Learn about it. America is all about the new rich. And the globalists hate the new rich. They have a disdain for us. Okay? They do not want you to be wealthy. And we are wealthy. Folks, you got a couple of vacations a year, nice car, little three-bedroom house, and a little swimming pool in the backyard and a jacuzzi. You're rich compared to any of our ancestors. We are all fabulously wealthy on average unless we have a mental or physical disability. And then there's some really bad, nasty areas in this country that are based on crime and are just horrible. And we, and, we, and we should fix those areas. But the point is that this running down the American system, the globalists know they're in competition with it. They know they can't compete with it and they want to destroy it. And they love the fact that Americans hold less passports than any other first world nation. And so the average American that I hear bitching and complaining about this country, they've not been to Central America or South America like I have. They've not been to Eastern Europe. They've not been to third world countries. They've not been to Africa because, believe me, they would shut their moron mouth real fast. Real fast. You go to Mexico City, you're going to stop bitching about this country real fast. You go to uh, areas in Honduras. My, my dad's gone and done all these medical charity deals. In, in, in the middle of South America, unbelievable, unbelievable poverty, unbelievable violence, unbelievable, just out of control behavior. And down there, some of the only people producing food and holding up the civilization are the Amish. And all over South America, governments are trying to rob the Amish and take over their property and not even let them operate. It is just so incredibly sad that we've reached this point. And the average American has no idea what's even going on on this planet right now. Zero. And Hillary Clinton hopes that continues. Now, I'm going to go to your phone calls right now. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. The lines are full, but when somebody hangs up, that's your chance. I'd love for first-time callers to call in or people that haven't called in a while to give you a chance. And we're specifically on a topic of the election. It's a big area. But it's front and center, a global election, one of the most important, some are saying the most important in history, between globalism and populism, nationalism and world government, global corporate, neo-colonialism, and a return to the nation state, which creates so much freedom and so much wealth under a renaissance system. There is no choice if you know history, but that's why they don't want us to know history, so we're doomed to repeat the fraudulent history that they're foisting on us. And then coming up, Tim Kaine goes on a full damage control, attacking yours truly yesterday, the vice presidential candidate, uh, and says that there's no room for free speech in America for the alt-right. Buddy, I'm the liberal, and you know it. Thomas Jefferson would look at me and say, patriot, liberal. He'd look at you and say, tyrannous, just like that. The founder of your party would turn his face from you in about half a second. Uh, we're going to get into all this talk of Hillary dropping out of the race. I'm not saying that's happening. That's being d discussed in mainstream media. We told you about it early on because Democrats were tweeting that they were already meeting in D.C. Uh, discussing this. Now it's in everything from the Daily Mail to the New York Times. I'll go over that.
Uh, we've got a really important report I haven't gotten to yet. That's Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 invades Austin, Texas from John Bowne. Uh, we've got Hillary having a medical exam done to her for neurological problems right before she collapsed. Of course it's not pneumonia. She's had this falling down for years, folks. She's lying, open and shut. But I want to play one more clip before we go to your calls. This is, or maybe two, this is a clip by Stephanie Cutter, again on MSNBC. And they are talking about how all of Trump's people are deplorable. All, all of you are bad, all of you are evil, all of you are racist, all of you are horrible because you don't like Hillary Clinton selling us out to the Saudi Arabians and funding radical jihadists and serving the Chinese president. It's come out in the emails, you pay her money and then she gives you access to the Chinese president. She should be arrested immediately. There should be federal SWAT teams ramming down her door now, months ago. I mean, this is the most flagrant naked treason it's ridiculous and it's discrediting our country it's not our country doing this it's the globalist in fact mash we have a mashup of this so let me just play this this is kane attacking yours truly hillary attacking me a few weeks ago but kane's yesterday tied into these very same people talking about how despicable and deplorable we are and, and then i've got one more clip of alex witt Again, only showing Hillary stumble, not fall down and be drugged into the car, and saying, see, the conspiracy theorists are lying. They say she fell down, she didn't. Deceiving her viewers savagely. I, I mean, if I did something like this, I would expect to be have no listeners in one day. I mean, this is lying to you at a level, hoping you're so stupid you don't go see the full clip. And it's the same liar that says that I'm, quote, deeply racist. And you look at these bug-eyed, narcissistic-looking nut women. I mean, these people look like crazy people out of a movie. So let's play this mashup, and we're going right to your calls. Uh, when David Duke is doing robocalls saying vote for Donald Trump and Tim others uh, who are kind of at the very fringe of the conspiracy movement, like Alex Jones, are being kind of incorporated uh, into the campaign in ways, it's a, or even the recent choices. All right, hit pause. Management. Start it over. I've got to respond to this. Notice how he just segued that David Duke and, quote, Alex Jones are being incorporated in the campaign. It's true I've been incorporated in the campaign because I'm a patriot. I'm telling the truth. David Duke has it. That is pure bull, and you know it. Again, deception, twisting, spinning, mixing truth with lies. Let's go back to this little slimy CIA pimp. Uh, when David Duke is doing robocalls saying vote for Donald Trump and others uh, who are kind of at the very fringe of the conspiracy movement like Alex Jones are being kind of incorporated uh, into the campaign in ways it's a or even the recent choices of campaign management this is something that is really important and I think we do need to call it out they said in October I'd be dead in six months it's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how dark their heart must be to say things like that. But Trump doesn't challenge these lies. You can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Do you think it's tough to re but defend you, the remark deplorables to do the, to, to stereotype a group of people or not? not. I, I think that her only mistake is that she said half of his supporters were deplorable. Does anybody around this table, have they not seen Trump's rallies? Have they not seen Trump's own remarks? What she said was not wrong. Her only mistake was that she described half of his supporters that way. Well, uh These sycophants will defend their queen to the end. Every major channel of mainstream news is only showing her stumble and then not collapse and fall over and be dragged into the vehicle. And the Secret Service told us, they said, look, just, just go to her events, be outside, be at the back, you hang around enough, you're going to see what's happening. We're not going to tell you, just, 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 just show up. Just show up to the vehicles that have got the special ramps to get her in, you'll see what we're talking about.
He told you that a month ago. She's falling down. They said, we don't know what she's got. We think it's Parkinson's brain tumor. She's falling down. It's getting worse. There's going to be a big announcement. And you notice what's happening a month later. I mean, we have the sources. And the New York Post, Drudge has the cover, calls it Hillary. She skipped the ER to dodge the media. Health crisis and secrecy worry allies. Their meeting decide what to do. She could step down. Oh, we're wrong again. We told you fluoride lowered IQ. Harvard came out three years ago with 25 studies and said, take it out. It's brain damaging people. Lower in IQ. Oh, we told you that Saudi Arabia worked with criminals in our government for a stand down on 9-11. It's all now been declassified. 28 pages. Told you so. On and on and on. We told you they were going to try to come in and federalize the election. A month before it happened. Boom, it's happened. Because we're not yes men here. Okay, I want to play one more clip and then go to Mesmer, John, Steve, Andrew, and Chris and others. This is the clip I was mentioning of Alex Witt or Alex Twitt. And again, if you're a radio listener, I'll describe it. She shows the first three or four seconds of Hillary kind of wobbling. Looks like she stumbles. Not the next 10 or 15 where she falls down and is drug into the vehicle. I mean, this is the biggest deception ever. Be like, oh, Dale Earnhardt only hit a pothole and his wheel didn't even come off. Meanwhile, he crashes and, you know, dies. Or Senna. Oh, Senna, you know, when he died down in the race in Brazil or whatever it was, the famous Formula One driver, he just kind of hit a bump and he wasn't even hurt. No, Senna, you know, blew up and died. I, I mean, it, it's like saying... The Challenger didn't blow up over Florida. Well, everybody knows the Challenger didn't blow up like Alex Jones is saying. No, the Challenger just had a little leak and it got into space and got back down to Earth. And then you just show it launching and go, see, there's a Challenger, kids. Challenger's fine. It's North Korea-level BS. The Challenger blew up. Its boosters blew up, okay? Hillary Clinton fell on her face and they had to drag her into a vehicle. She had a freaking seizure. But this woman... Sits in every other damn channel. Excuse me, God. I promise I'm going to stop doing this family show. I just get so angry. They sit there and they lie to you to your face thinking you don't know how to go find the full clip. Or thinking you're so used to being lied to that they won't be held accountable. You have been held accountable. You have no viewers. You're a pack of, of harpies up there regurgitating lies into each other's nest. Let's, let's play the clip. Here it is. What we will see here now is her getting into the car. She was a little bit unstable there. She was a, a little bit wobbly. That's, I think, an appropriate word to use. You can see right there. You know, by the way, I should have mentioned Michael Savage is scheduled to come on today. I'm very excited about that. And we also have a bunch of other big guests. Um, but, but again, she just cuts the clip. I'm going to go to your calls. I'm skipping this break so we have more time. But let's play that clip one more time because... I want to take all the clips of the news doing this, saying, look, she didn't fall down like these people are saying. I've seen that. She just had a little stumble. CNN said she just stumbled, okay? MSNBC, she stumbled. Big deal. You know, it's Christina Amon poor. She says, cries sexism. Quote, can't a girl have a sick day or two? Can't a girl like you go and launch fake wars in the Balkans and set up those people and kill tens of thousands of them? I mean, you're a monster, Amon poor. You and your State Department husband, you work for Hillary. You are a monster. But Amon Poor says, can a girl have a sick day? And the Huffington Post says that we need to have an apology from the media for even covering our empress. Talk about delusional. Let's play it one more time. What we will see here now is her getting into the car. She was a little bit unstable there. She was a, a little bit wobbly. That's, I think, an appropriate word to use. You can see right there. <laughs> These people, look at the arrogance of that woman. These people had put us in a FEMA camp in a minute. These are the most immoral, evil, just, just absolutely deceptive monsters you could ever see. They know, and on every channel they're doing it. They cut before she falls flat on her freaking face. I mean, these people are the enemy. They've declared us the enemy. No, witch, you are. What type of country do you think you're going to live in where they've got the media lined up to lie about everything? You feel safe in a country like that without a watchdog? Oh, but you're part of the power structure. I get it. Okay, let's go to your phone calls. I want to thank Mesmer. I guess he's going to mesmerize us. 
uh, John, Steve, Andrew, Chris, and many others for calling in. Mesmer in Maryland. That's the state where she was for a year having her secret of brain surgeries. Uh, Mesmer, what's on your mind today? Uh, good morning, Alex. How are you today? I'm pretty good. Go ahead. Welcome. Uh, I have a uh, degree in uh, science, uh, biological, neurological, psycho psychological. Uh, when you guys were talking about the fact that Hillary had had uh, uh, surgery here in Maryland, one of the most foremost, Johns Hopkins, one of the most foremost neurological facilities in the world, uh, I really started to think about that and, uh, and, and take a very close look at the behaviorisms that she was exhibiting. And I dug back into the uh, APA, American Psychological Association's websites, and I started doing some research on brain tumors. And what you what I found is that uh, the major symptoms of brain tumor uh, is that uh, the organs start to shut down. So what you're seeing in, in this multiple uh, myriad of of, uh, of symptoms, people saying, oh, she's got this, she's got that, it's Alzheimer's, it's, uh, it's actually all of the above because the symptoms of brain tumor are the organ shutting down, so, and grand mal seizures, uh, uh, congestive heart failure, incontinence, et cetera. So she's... This coughing, you know, that, that, that suggests... Everything uh, shutting down. That's what, that's what Dr. Pachenik, who actually had doctors that run these facilities, work for him. He's obviously not going to give out medical information. He's not going to give out private info. But his, his information is, and he's always been dead on, Hillary has a brain tumor and a, and a lung tumor. It's metastasized. She is not long for this world. And I have that from other sources that say just the symptoms and what she's on is it points towards brain tumor, not blood clots. And the fact Correct. that she's falling down and it's getting worse, that's what starts happening with a brain tumor is it gets worse and worse till you lose neurological control. And that's what the Secret Service told us is that she's falling down every 30, 40 minutes, every hour. It's bad. I mean, she is in bad shape, brother. Yeah, that is classic, classic brain tumor symptoms. Uh, uh, also, your brainwashing uh, analysis is dead on as well. Uh, yeah, my, my, I, I noticed that you, you go into your family history quite a bit, and, uh, and mine's kind of colored as well. Uh, I'm the, uh, the descendant of Franz Anton Mesmer, the man who invented hypnotism, basically. That's amazing. Uh, uh, well, then send me the proof of that. I'd like to have you on as a guest sometime, but let me just expand on this briefly. Here's why I'm saying this. They have this 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 large uh, black man that follows her around everywhere so he can pick her up. We saw that again on Sunday, uh, which we predicted. He has the EpiPen, four seizures. He's always at her side. And when she starts looking like she's going out of reality, he comes up and tells her everything's okay, and she snaps back in. That's why I'm saying it's like mind control. I'm not saying she's literally under mind control, but that's why she had an earpiece. And I've talked to some insiders. They say that she does wear one. It's in the emails. It's in the WikiLeaks that they're doing all of this mesmer uh, because she is losing cognitive ability and is coming in and out. Sorry, go ahead. People, people under high. Well, see, one of the things that's required for for you know, what you would call brainwashing is high levels of stress. Yes, and it makes a person very susceptible to suggestion, especially. Well, that's what. But that's what boot camp is. Is by the sixth or eighth or tenth or twelfth week is you actually get into a brainwashed mode for it to be highly suggestible to be programmed. Now, real brainwashing just takes that 10 times harder. Right, well, they take you, they, they, they say flat out right at the beginning, we're going to break you at the beginning of boot camp. I went through boot camp at Fort Jackson, Mississippi back in the 80s. Uh, I, I, I completely understand exactly what goes on there. Yes, it's, it, they put you under a high stress situation so that they can break down your resistance and, uh, and basically reprogram you to be the person that they need. Uh, yeah, all government sanctioned, but yeah, this all came out back in the eight, mid mid eighteen hundreds uh, over in Europe, and uh, they they uh, castigated. Uh, Absolutely, Trump that was the Germans Trump. invented most of that. Great points, God bless you. Yeah, Mesmer, send me some info. I'm sure that's true. It sounds very interesting. I'd like to have you on as a guest to talk about your ancestors. Very very uh, interesting. But but that, look, listen, all I know is Hillary looks like she's a crazy bag lady part of the time. Then she kind of looks like her old self a little bit. And then she's clearly drugged up, so she's not having seizures. They've got to get her off the drugs partially to get her out in public, so she then has the seizures. 
It's deteriorating quickly. She, she was in a facility for a year that specializes in brain tumors, and most of those brain tumors come back, boys and girls. A little too much time on the cell phone. Steve in Texas, thanks for holding her on the air worldwide, Steve. Alex, short and sweet. Alex, sharing the truth woke me up. I'm 62, and I take all the products, and I feel like I'm 40 again. I love it. Thanks for the support. Hillary is actually, Hillary is actually Satan's first lady. And every word she says is the opposite of the truth. May God's force be with you. Us, we the people, are yelling for justice through Donald, through Donald Trump. Thanks, Alex. Absolutely. God bless you. I'm really excited about getting Michael Savage on coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll take some more calls and then get Michael Savage on. Uh, again, Michael Savage does not do a lot of, other, of uh, interviews. We're always honored to have him on. He's one of the few talk show hosts that is an egomaniac. You know, who, who has other hosts on. He's had me on many times. He's had our crew on many times. Uh, he really does care about the country. Uh, I agree with about 95% of what Savage stands for. I'm sure he's the same way back at me, but uh, this is somebody who is highly dedicated to fighting the New World Order and always brings up a lot of profound angles and important information. Uh, so he's coming up. Uh, he's got the new book out, and he also, of course, writes for World Net Daily. Michael Savage, we're number one bad election away from losing America. We're one bad election away from losing America. Uh, that is coming up. And Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama uh, is the name of the book. And I've got mine being overnighted as we speak. It's supposed to arrive today. And it's funny, before I even knew the name of his new book, about a month ago, I was here at the office telling the crew, and then I was also telling family just this weekend, I said, it's time for Scorched Earth, people. They're not playing games with us. We're not playing games with them. It's time to take the gloves off. I don't mean physically. The person that strikes first physically is, 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 is not going to lose, but is at a major disadvantage. We are winning the info war. We need to intensify that operation, but like our lives depend on it. You can feel the spirit in the air, the electricity of evil and good clashing. This is an historic time, and I'm so blessed to be alive. We'll be back. Thank you for joining us. I was saying that the, night, the book was being overnighted. It just arrived in the mail. It just arrived via FedEx. Boom, during the break. And I just had two minutes to read. Uh, I cannot, because I love history. I can't wait to read this new book, Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama. I opened to a page about Edmund Burke uh, supporting the British Empire, but not supporting the empire erasing countries' cultures, which globalism is doing. And it's, he's so sophisticated. He's probably the smartest talk show host out there when it comes to wide-ranging knowledge. Uh, George Norrie is really smart as well. Uh, when it comes to passion and, and taking the globalist on uh, and, and being well-read, I mean, I'm right up there with Savage, but Savage really is a smart guy. Uh, put it to you this way, I don't learn a lot of stuff from other people on radio. They just take a couple topics, repeat it over and over again, take phone calls. They don't even want to be there. They don't even want to be on air. They don't care. They just want money. Savage doesn't even need to be on air. He's a very successful person, and that's why I admire what he's doing and his plan and I've been listening to the show, he's been talking about Scorched Earth, I haven't read it yet, is an excellent one to take back this country and this world. So Michael Savage joining us at the start of the next segment. In fact, there he is. He just came and sat down there. So we're going to come back right after this break and uh, go to Michael Savage. Uh, first off, though, let's jam another phone call in here. Who is up next? Uh, let's go ahead and take a call here from Chris in Virginia. You're on the air. Go ahead. All right, with uh, Hillary falling and coughing and stumbling all over the place, I can't help but think to what Larry Nichols was saying about her trying to use that as sympathy points for the debate. What do you think about that? You know, a lot of people said months ago, look out, Hillary could be trying to get sympathy. She could play on this poor little her. The problem is the media lied about it. She lied about it. She's clearly really sick. Okay, I mean, this is not fake. She could try to spin that now and use that crisis uh, but I think I don't think Hillary's long for this world. The word we've got from insiders is brain tumor was cut out in 2012. Brain tumor is back and is growing. Uh, but regardless, the media only shows her being a little bit dizzy. They don't show her falling on her face. So what this is really about is discrediting the media. What do you think? I think it is about discredited the media, and also I think that they're trying to put it out there with the pneumonia thing. Even though it's a fake and it's a lie, if they put it out there now before the debate, it gives them some kind of credibility going in there saying that, oh, she was had pneumonia or, oh, she was sick. 
Well, I totally agree with you that this whole thing about pneumonia is bull. I mean, she hasn't had coughing fits for years from pneumonia. She hasn't been fainting and falling down, having blood clots from pneumonia. First, she said on Sunday that it was just hot out there. And then she said, oh, I was diagnosed with pneumonia. She didn't go to the hospital. She went to Chelsea's $10 million pad. She had $6 million a year from the Clinton Foundation swindle. Uh, so she could, quote, then walk out and hug the little girl behind the police line, uh, the Secret Service line. It doesn't get more staged in Pyongyang, North Korea. Thanks for the call, Chris. Now, we're going to go to John and Mike and Jennifer and Andrew and a lot of other folks. If you want to hold, if not, you can hang up. I'll give the numbers out again later. After Michael Savage leaves us at the bottom of the hour, we're going to go to break and come back uh, with Michael Savage to talk about currently what's happening, the dirty tricks he thinks they're going to play, uh, and how we counter them, and then how we would restore this country if a Donald J. Trump gets in. Uh, so you, you, when it, you talk about deplorables, I've been attacked by name. Um, I know that uh, the, the vice presidential candidate attacked me again and said I'm one of the top deplorables. But I tell you, we're talking to maybe the king deplorable when we come back, according to the globalists, the leftists, the scum, the communists, the socialists, the New World Order people, because Michael Savage has been one of the chief thorns in their side for decades. So we're going to ask one of the top deplorables where he thinks this is going and how we defeat them straight ahead. The book that's just now coming out is Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage, number one New York Times bestseller. And you can go to michaelsavage.wnd.com. And we'll also give you his website on the other side, michaelsavage.com, the home of the Savage Nation, borders, language, culture. All this and more, Scorched Earth, now available. I'm Alex Jones. This is the InfoWar. You can find us at infowars.com. Well, I got to tell you, there's probably three people in the last few decades that have been on the front lines of fighting globalism and getting made fun of it. Uh, that's Michael Savage, Alex Jones, and Matt Drudge. And I guess we're all here today because I'm told he just talked to Drudge, and Drudge is tuned in right now. Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage. Very powerful book. Just got it today. Been thumbing through it. I'm a big history buff. Cannot wait to read this book. We need to make this number one on the New York Times bestseller list. It is a manifesto against the globalists that have literally taken this country and Europe over. Brexit is only the beginning. The globalists are panicking in every major publication they run. Uh, the Economist, the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post saying that if Trump defeats Hillary, the New World Order is basically uh, broke back. So we are in the title match of history. Everyone should go to bookstores to make this the number one book, buy it in bookstores everywhere today, Scorched Earth. This is the front lines of the info war. Joining us for the next uh, 20 minutes or so is Michael Savage of the Savage Nation, one of the top radio shows in the country, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, you've got the floor, my friend. Let's talk about where we are, what we're facing, two minutes to midnight. Well, number one, you are, you are really the field marshal of it all, Alex. Come on, we know that they're more afraid of you and InfoWars than almost anyone else in the media. I mean, you, Matt Trudge, there aren't too many left. That's what's worrisome, isn't it, Alex? And you were named by this evil machine specifically. And I would say that, you know, you say hyperbole and this and that. We all one bad election away from losing everything, which is on the back of my book cover. And I don't know that we can recover from Obama's scorched earth policies. We know he's trampled the Constitution. And I don't know how any of your listeners, you know, whatever the side they're on, you know, you know, and I know you get all the opposition listening. And I'd like all of the good progressives who listen to Alex to see if they can nail him to a cross. Tell me that one of these things has not magnified under this Cretan in the White House. Is this not becoming a third world nation of terror? Check. Yes. Riots. Check. Black Lives Matter. Mobs. Check. Black Lives Matter. Chaos. Check. Barack Obama. Terror, riots, mobs, and chaos. This is a novelty in American history. I haven't seen anything like this historically since the 60s. And before that, when was the last time you've seen America like this? And the beauty of all of this, Alex, is how he's gotten away with it. Because you've got to give him credit. Barry Obama is the slickest salesman of communism the world has ever, ever discovered. No screaming, no yelling, no threats. Just a, a silk smooth, good-looking, nice guy with a lovely wife and children, selling the most evil poison the world has ever, ever been asked to ingest. 
And look how far he's gotten. And every time he gets away with another outrage against this nation, he raises the stakes like a junkie. He needs a higher dose of insult in order to maintain the high. Am I wrong, Alex? You're dead on, Mr. Savage. Dr. Savage, please continue. So the question is, okay, I'm, I'm complaining about him. I'm saying she's worse, which is true, which is ludicrous. She says America wants change. From what? From the same policies she's going to continue? She's suddenly not a progressive lunatic? When, wait a minute. She's going to change Obama's policies in which way? Make them worse? How she can't go the other way, and then she'd be Donald Trump. So it means she's going to make it even worse than him. That's if she remembers what she's supposed to do. And that's doubtful, as you well know, because she doesn't know how many times she fainted. Uh, so the point is, how do we uncouple this insanity? It is going to be really hard. You know and I know there was a UAC in the 1950s, and it's a dirty word of the most dirty of words, the House of Un-American Activities Committee, which was run by one of the great American patriots, Senator McCarthy. He has been completely decimated by the left. McCarthy was a tail gunner in World War II, one of the most dangerous positions you could ever have in an airplane, right? Belly gunner, B-24. Easiest missions. target was the tail. That's what they attacked. Listen what the left did to him. They called him, they mocked him and called him tail gunner Joe. In other words, they took his heroism and tried to turn it into a mockery. That was in the 50s, Alex, to show you who they were already, the communists. So what was McCarthy saying, this great war hero? He was saying that, Hollywood had been in, infiltrated by communists. The journalists had been infiltrated by communists. Academia had been infiltrated by communists. And the government itself. Well, what happened was they had the hearings. They ruined him. They destroyed the man. And then what happened in the 1990s, I'm sure you remember the book, the Venona Papers came out. It was a, a Soviet... Russian publication. Turned out it was all <laughs> true. The Russian documents came out. And it was worse than what McCarthy was saying. Worse. It confirmed who in Hollywood, who in academia, who in government was, in fact, an operative of the Soviet Union. So there were subversives. UAC was exactly on target. I say the only way we can save this nation is not talking about it, but by rooting out the subversives in the United States of America. And I know many libertarians are afraid of this for fear that it will turn on them. Well, let's put that fear aside for the moment. In fact, let me just add this since you're saying this, because this is a point I want to make. If you look at the globalists, if you look at their leftists, they're saying the alt-right can't be tolerated. They're saying we need to be shut down and arrested. Hillary says she's going to shut down Breitbart. That means Drudge, you. They say they're bringing back fairness doctrine. They say they're coming after us. They're run by this foreign globalist Soros. Russia's already kicked him out. These are foreign globalists here overthrowing our country so under the constitution these aren't even citizens they don't have the rights they're here overthrowing the system to survive we must go on the offensive we must root them out it's the only way to ever beat them they are criminals they are subversives they are Saul Alinsky pledging to Lucifer please continue yeah they want to lynch all of us if not electronically then physically and the fact of the matter is they have names these are not nameless faceless organizations the number one and the worst of them all, in my humble opinion, is the ACLU. The Anti-Christian Liberties Union is the number one. They're the head of the snake. Now, the man behind all of it is George Soros, the most evil man on the planet, in my estimation. The absolutely most evil person the world has seen in modern times. You know, you don't have to hang people, electrocute them, put them in cages. You don't have to do the things that ISIS is doing to be evil. He's evil on a larger scale than the ISIS executioners are because he's gutting the United States of America. He's trampling on our Constitution. He helped fund the, the Arab Spring. He helped fund the Arab Spring. Hillary, all of them. Amen. And I keep saying she owns it. He was the one who, who, by the way, he funded it. But you know who was the architect the best I can put together? Was Zbigniew Brzezinski, That's Jimmy right. Carter's national security advisor. Brzezinski was the architect. Soros was the financier. Hillary Clinton was the publicist and an actor, along with John Kerry. I'd say she, she was the quarterback with Kerry and Obama. She destroyed the Middle East. She owns that. How does the media, forget the media, why doesn't Trump 
put her on a cross with that and one. And by the way, Mr. It's Savage, Dr. Savage, that's not hyperbole. She literally destabilized 20-something countries that Al-Qaeda and ISIS are running around. Hundreds of thousands of dead Christians. They won't even let Christians out of the region. It's it, it, These people are demons, just like the true liberal Assange said, look, I've got the documents. The press is dead if she gets in. Our necks are in nooses. She's a demon. You must stop her. I hear you. And I also saw who wrote the other day that Obama, the nice, slick, smooth, nice family man, has created the greatest surveillance state in the history of the world. And suddenly liberals are afraid of it because they understand what happens when the guillotine uh, stops, starts falling. First, it takes out your opposition. But as, um, as the world learned during the French Revolution, the, the guillotine has an unlimited taste for blood. And it doesn't stop with the enemies of the revolution. Then they turn on their own kind and start executing their own so-called so counter-revolutionaries, as was done in the Soviet Union. Always happens. As was, done in, as was done in Cuba, as was done in Hitler's Germany. They killed their own. The brown shirts. And the, the guillotine keeps falling and cuts heads. It is the most thirsty instrument on earth. And that's why the left ought to step up and shut their fat mouths when we stand up to these monsters. These monsters need to be stopped or we're all finished, left, right, and center. That's right. So how do we stop them? Your book, I just got it, incredible, gets into the blueprint, sir, with your incredible historical understanding. How do we beat these bastards? Because they know we've got them in a the corner now, but what tricks are they going to play? And then if we get Trump in, the battle just begins. What do we do? Oh, you said the magic words. If Trump wins, the battle begins because we know he is surrounded by neocons. We see that. I was shocked to read yesterday he hired Woolsey. Yeah. Woolsey? The head, former head of the CIA under Bill Clinton is now going to be his CIA director. So I laid in bed last night. He said, wait a minute, what is this about? And I said, well, you know, the CIA is a complicated organization. I mean, you need not, someone who knows how to run it, right? But look at Woolsey's track record. How could he join it as a senior advisor? Why him? Isn't there a returning combat veteran who worked in military intelligence who would have been a better choice? Some higher up American citizen patriot. Somebody like General head Flynn. Up the CIA under Trump. Why Woolsey? Why Foggy Bottom all over again? Okay, but Alex, I, I don't want to waste your no, time. No, please take over. Well, the way to defeat the enemy is to know your enemy. The way to know your enemy is to name the enemy. So who who are the subversive organizations who have who have destroyed and are destroying our civil liberties? We know the ACLU. We know the Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, yeah. We know CARE. In my opinion, those are the three top of them. But I want to read to you all the others. Can I do that? Please. Because I made a whole list in, in Scorched Earth. I, I studied the cockroaches. And I said, let's bring them into the light and expose them. Make them scatter like cockroaches when you turn on the light. The request I am making, Alex Jones, and to all your listeners, is this. Name subversive organizations. As organizations you consider to be so far off the ideal of the American way that they are, in fact, subversive. And what does that mean? That means they spend all of their resources going against the wishes of the Constitution and the taxpayer. So who are they? I have a list. They're right here. Who are these organizations? They're trying to conquer us. They've done a pretty good job so far. They see us as deplorable because we just want to be free. National Lawyers Guild. Who are they? One of the most dangerous activist groups in the nation. Every time there was a riot by Black Thugs Matter at an anti-police protest, the scum in the National Lawyers Guild sold out, sent out their deranged psychotic lawyers from the worst law schools in America to make sure the police could not do their jobs. Every last shyster in the National Lawyers Guild is the type of lawyer that you have come to hate in plain English. Now, of course, they will argue that they're just for the underdog, that they're there for the poor immigrant and the oppressed minority. Well, you know what? I don't buy it. I want a lawyer's guild for the tax-paying middle class, Alex, not a lawyer's guild for the subversives who are bringing in refugees, immigrants, whatever you want to call them by the tens of millions. And we have the Soros emails where he admits it's to destabilize the country. Uh, he admits destabilization. H who admitted that? George Soros in the, in, in the latest DC leaks and others. He's, he's in there admitting that it's a plan to overthrow Europe and the U.S. and create racial strife. Correct. Alliance for Democracy. Um, Amnesty International, Black Lives Matter, Center for American Progress, Center for Media and Democracy. I'll read a few of them. Center for Science and the Public Interest, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics. I have two pages that I researched, Alex, in my book. Is Media Matters and David Brock in there? Um, they're, they're all over the place. 
you name these organizations, it's like a spider web. Rockefeller Brothers Foundation, Blue Moon Fund, things you never heard of. Ford Foundation. Joyce Foundation. Joyce Foundation. Who ever heard of the Joyce Foundation? HKH Foundation. Dolan Charitable Trust. Vanguard Foundation. Archer Foundation. Solinsky's Back of the Yards Community Council. National Hip Hop Political Convention. Cuban Council of Churches. People don't even know these organizations. These cockroaches are crawling all over us, devouring our flag of liberty, Al. You're absolutely right. And they admit they want to collapse us and our borders into a world government. Dr. Savage, when you say the battle just begins, and, and I say that if Trump gets in, and I'm not counting our chickens yet, I mean, uh, why do you say the battle just begins? We just lost to Skype. Skype is a wondrous thing when it has its issues. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so historical. The establishments control the left and the right to bring in globalism, but they're making their worldwide takeover with the left. And this is not a liberal group. Liberal means lower taxes, more freedom, more control locally. This is not liberal. They call themselves liberal. They have the moral high ground. The Republican establishment is working with them in a big, big way. The book is Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage. We're listeners supported by you, our main sponsor, the listeners. We have Hillary for President Shirts. At cost, nine ninety five. That includes uh, the shipping, nine ninety five. Nine ninety five shipping and the shirt all together. That funds the operation. Infowarsstore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for our supplements. Uh, but get the book, Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage. Get it in stores so that it becomes basically an end cap and a bestseller to educate people that are not aware of what's happening. Because that's Michael Savage's real skill, I found. That's something I'm able to do as well. Most of these mainline right-wingers can't do it because they're just following a script is that he's able to get leftists, a lot of them that mean well, out of their cocoon. And it, and uh, uh, Dr. Savage continuing with the subversive organizations in the, in the five, six minutes we have left, you promise to come back next week if your voice isn't out. I really appreciate you to, you to do more and talk about the campaign. But hitting some of these other areas, her health, her cover-up, the mainstream uh -huh. media's ratings imploding, uh, them trying to start all these new wars, uh, Russia, I'm not lionizing Putin, but... He's bringing back nationalism. He's arrested and thrown out all the Soros people as subversive. I mean, just all the crazy things happening. It seems there's a quickening. Do you agree with that? And what does this signify? Mm -hmm. What you just said, you, you explained it better than I could, Alex. I mean, you see the global picture. Uh, the fact is, uh, which one do you want me to talk about? Anyone you, know, you want. Taking, just, I mean, the top, you know, top things. Talk about something that in the middle of us talking about and me listing all the subversive organizations, that I researched in Scorched Earth. Did you notice what happened? We lost the connection that my Skype dropped. Did you catch that one? It's crazy. It's the, well, they admit Google's all game, the Internet's game. They admit they're blocking terms for searching on Hillary. They admit they're censoring uh, patriot groups in Europe that criticize open borders. It's crazy. You mentioned a key word there, Google. For weeks, I've been railing against the monopolies that have emerged in America under Obama, the dictator. Google, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, of course, had been there before. Look at these companies. They're violating the antitrust statutes of the United States legal system. There is an antitrust division of the U.S. Justice Department that does not touch Mark Zuckerberg, does not touch the Google boys, does not touch Bill Gates. And there's a reason, because they all support the globalist New World Order agenda. They support it to the nth degree. And I've been screaming that when Trump becomes president, he must reactivate and use the Justice Department to break up these monopolies and give other people a chance to build a business. And I make a, a point of Teddy Roosevelt, who was a populist, as you well know, and his campaign slogan was, bust the trusts. The trusts in his day were Standard Oil, Rockefeller's Railroads, an oil company, company that dominated railroads and dominated the oil business. They didn't give anyone a chance of emerging. If they did, they crushed it. And it's the same globalist grandkids today that are running globalism. Zuckerberg, $58 billion isn't enough for that pig. He needs to cut the wages of American workers and throw them out of the country and bring in Indians to work for one third the wage. God bless India. God bless their intelligence. God bless India. But we got to look out they, for us a little bit. They, they belong in India. Let them, let them rebuild their own economy and let them hire IT workers at a right, at a right salary. So, yeah, you want to talk about jobs. Why do you think, no, not you, I'm talking well, rhetorically. Listen, sure. Why do you think Trump is surging amongst the blue-collar, disenfranchised white male? Why? Because they've been dumped upon. They've been stepped upon. The Eddies, whose grandfathers defeated Hitler, the Eddies, whose fathers died in the jungles of Vietnam, are being crapped upon by these vermin, these cowardly vermin. 
these sick, deviant perverts. I can't stand it. I'll get worked up, and I don't want to. I'm trying not to, Alex. This is the first interview I've done. Wow. For this book. Thank you. And, and Alex, I got to tell you, you're, the, you're on the front lines. You're going to be around a lot longer than I am in the media and probably on this planet. And you're doing the job that needs to be done. And all I can say is, as the time comes to an end right here, when I say that Obama and the left are practicing a scorched earth policy, there's a reason for it. When an army retreated in the past, they burnt everything to the ground. They burnt the crops. They killed the livestock. They burned the barns. They burned earth. the houses. Is that not what's going on here with this left when they see an ascendant right and ascendant American? That's patriot. right. They're blowing it all up. They're burning our, they're burning our pathways to survival. They're burning our internet. They want to burn radio. They want to burn any access. They're trying to, to start a race war. They're saying kill the cops. They're getting away with everything. I keep saying Soros gave them seventy million dollars to those street thugs. All we need now is Obama to uh, turn them into his well-funded private army. He can deputize them and give them government arms as he did ISIS, and then you will have the young pioneers of the Soviet Union. You will have the Red Brigades. You will have the Red Brigades of Communist China frightening everybody in the society uh, on a daily basis. Alex, we're that close to it all coming to that. Obama is not finished yet. He has several months left yet to burn it all down, Alex. I agree. We've only got a minute left then. In your gut, you're a smart cookie, Dr. Savage. What do you expect them to pull? Remember what George Bush did in the last few months of his regime? I was screaming and warning George Bush is a fiscal socialist. He's not through yes. Do you remember the housing yes. crisis that followed? I expect that if it looks like Trump is going to win or, or, or Grandma falls off the stage again for good and they replace her with uh, uh, Freddie from one of the nightmare movies, Kane, who can't win, uh, I expect the worst. I expect them calling off the election. I expect martial law. I expect if that is not possible, I expect a financial, complete financial breakdown to create even further chaos. That's what I expect. I concur with that. So every uh, person, very race, color, and creed that wants to live in a somewhat free country now be involved, spread the word, expose these people. They're all over the news pushing the idea of suspending the election now because of Hillary. Oh. Uh, the book, Scorched Earth, in bookstores all over the country. Uh, Michael Savage, michaelsavage.com. Thank you so much for spending so much uh, time with us today. we got about 45 seconds. Final point. There is no final point. The nation is wrecked right now. It's going to be unredeemably destroyed unless the Republican candidate wins. And I keep saying Republican candidate now because if I say the word Trump, people turn off. There are so many anti-Trump fake conservatives out there that the minute you say Trump, they go into overdrive. So say the Republican candidate. That makes it a little easier for them to, to recognize that there is a choice right now. They're really now. showing themselves as operatives, aren't they? Oh, all the people who hate Alex Jones and Michael Savage, who are true blue conservatives, who are they? Who are they, uh, Alex? We don't even need to say their names because they've destroyed themselves. That's the good news. They're losing the war. They've revealed themselves. The fight's now out in the open. And, and Dr. Savage, my gut tells me we're going to win in the end. What do you think? Well, with men like Glenn Beck rubbing his face in cornflakes, who was obviously <laughs> a very... And you look at him putting his face in cornflakes... <laughs> The man is obviously a very disturbed individual who was never on on any solid ground. And I have said before, liberalism is a mental disorder. You, sir, are absolutely right. You've charted the course. God bless you. We're Thank you, Michael march. Savage. Get the buck, folks. Alex. Incredible interview. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. This is the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Alex Jones. I got to tell you, folks, it's surreal to have somebody like Michael Savage say, Alex, you are the leader in this fight. You're the field marshal. That, I mean, that, that guy didn't tell other talk shows that. That is wild. And if you sit back and look at this whole battle space, there's like Matt Drudge, Michael Savage, Alex Jones, and then World Net Daily and Daily Caller and Breitbart. And I'm here wanting Savage to be way bigger than I am and Drudge, not out of some cowardice thing, but believe me, you don't want to be the numero uno in this fight, which I'm not, uh, because it's a dangerous position to be in with these killers. These people overthrow countries and, 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 and just kill hundreds of thousands of Christians. I mean, Hillary is literally a demon. Like Assange, a true liberal, said, he said, you don't know what I've seen and what's coming out. This woman is a demon. Our necks will be in nooses. We are all in grave danger.
And I would add in this fight is Julian Assange and is Vladimir Putin. In fact, if you want to know who's number one in the fight right now, not saying he's perfect, not saying Russia is perfect, but Russia's not advancing on us. Russia's not coming after us. Even CIA director Clapper has come out and said Russia is an adversary, but we need to, quote, find ways to cooperate. Russia's battling al-Qaeda and ISIS that Hillary and Soros and Obama have spawned. But it is Vladimir Putin. Okay, it's, 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 it's Russia not being part of the new world order that is sending shockwaves across the globe. Only having one national sovereign country that isn't under new world order control, partially, they're totally infiltrated like we are, having one quasi-sovereign country is upsetting the entire apple cart and gives Snowden a place to run. And then WikiLeaks that cut its teeth going after the Republicans, which it should, they were doing horrible stuff, is like, whoa, the Democrats are like 10 times worse. And so we've got Hillary Clinton coming out, pushing, you know, racism, all this garbage. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. And your phone calls, uh, Matt and uh, Karen and Kevin and Ron and Jennifer and others, the toll-free number to join us, talking about the election, talking about Hillary's collapse, talking about the suspension of the election. They're really pushing that right now. Where do you see all this going? We're going to be talking about all this and a lot more today. And I just want to briefly remind listeners, we are listener supported. I don't get paid to promote other people's books or Vanessa Souza's film. I promote them because they're important books and important films to educate people. We're in an information war. Okay? Most talk show hosts hit up people and say, hey, be a sponsor. I'll have you on. No, no, no. We want to fight the New World Order. We want to expose what they're doing. We want to win. We want to stand up for freedom, just like you do. But it it's important to support us. We are ending a special today on super high quality storable foods. 30 to 40% off. We rarely do this special on the entire line of InfoWars Select Storable Foods. It's not select group of foods. It, it's, the line is called Select because it's really high quality. It's the full spectrum of My Patriot Supply Food. But I can contractually private label it. It's drop shipped from them. Very same food comes off their factory line in full spectrum, full selection. But 30 to 40 percent off they're already super low prices if you want buy my patriot supply right next to ours for 30 to 40 percent more and help fund our operation just like we have the hillary for prison shirts for 1995 right next to the same shirt for 995 that's shipping included that is actually i was wrong it's not cost i lose about a dollar on that because there's two bumper stickers and a citizen rule book put in free and when it's triple x large or four x large I actually lose like two bucks but we're ending that special today. We have to because <laughs> I can't go bankrupt here losing. And we've sold like 10000 since the special started. That's over $10,000 I've lost. So that special ends today. I want to thank you all for getting the shirt. Buy it at nineteen ninety five. If you'd like to support the operation, Molon Lambe shirts for men and women, you name it. Hundreds of great shirts to spread the word, meet, meet like-minded people. Go wear one of our shirts out in the public area and you're going to meet patriots. You're going to meet enemies too, but mainly patriots. This is important for you to experience, and it supports the broadcast. But we've got 20% off X2 Survival Shield, Nason Iodine, 20% off our Vitamin Mineral Fusion, Amino Acid, Fruit Punch Drink. It's so absorbable for your body and your children's body. And so many other great products. 20% uh, off water filtration systems, 20% off indoor Alexa Pure uh, air filter systems that are normally 230 bucks. They're like 180 something right now. And, I mean, at the price that they normally are, it's a great deal. The leading competitor is 400 $500 for a very similar unit that does the same thing. Some units are $1,000 and aren't even as good. Uh, so we brought you the very best Alexa Pure that's available at InfoWarsStore.com with a 4.9 star review out of five by a third-party site, Power Reviews. And your purchase makes it all possible. This is the revolution against the globalist. This is the counteroffensive. This is Americana. And if Trump gets in, which is more and more going to happen unless they kill him, Ladies and gentlemen, the battle has just begun, and we are ready. They're going to start cop killing. They're going to start burning down buildings. They're going to pull all sorts of crap. We have to come together and preserve the republic, make it through this crisis, and, yes, arrest the conspirators. But we're fighting very bold people that have been getting away with Nazi collaborating since they were teenagers. These are bold. Imagine if you got away with rounding up thousands of Jews when you were 15 years old. And with the millions of dollars you made, uh, or francs you made, you were able to move here and take over. I mean, imagine how arrogant George Soros is. That, that son of a bitch, excuse me, that's not fair to people that don't have daddies, because I call him a cockroach, it's not fair. 
Um, he's incredible, and he is number one enemy. That guy has it out for us. He calls himself messianic and believes he's the Messiah. What type of Messiah pulls stuff like this? Not a very good one. So you ain't it, brother. Let me give you a little newsflash. You look like a demonic toad. Now, speaking of demonic toads, Buckley ran into me, my cousin, one of the guys who's been working with InfoWars for 20-plus years, and he came up and he said, have you seen you know this toad meme? I forget the name of it. For years, they've made fun of me with it, but, but it's also kind of an honor to have 4chan and, and you know all these uh, trolls that are m more sweetie pies make fun of you. I mean, it means they like you. And then if you're good-natured about it, you know, then you get made fun of more, which is fun. I mean, I like getting made fun of. It's better than just being lied about. And so I know this toad meme or this frog meme is not associated with racial stuff, but with making fun of people. And so you can find the memes where I've got the toad head on or our guests have the toad head on. It, it, I mean, I've seen it for years. I don't even know what it is. I don't really follow this stuff. I just know it's funny. So Buckley, uh, Buckley Hammond, we now have... Hillary coming out saying, I'm racist. Tim Kaine came out and said, I'm racist. I'm going to play the clip in a moment. Because our website before has tweeted this toad or, or frog. Explain to me how I'm racist uh, or, or how this toad is racist. <laughs> well, the reason why you are, quote, racist is because Hillary Clinton is scratching and clawing and grasping at any straw that she can get her hands on right now. And the only tool that she thinks she has in her in her tool bucket is to uh, blanket accuse people that oppose her of racism, which, as we know, is patently absurd because her she her mentor is a bird, you know, who was the Ku Klux Klan uh, grand grand dragon wizard. But however, this is this is a really super surreal story that's actually happening right now. And it's it, the depths of it are so ludicrous. In fact, let's show the headline for radio listeners so I can read it out for folks because we forget we're not just TV, we're radio. Hillary Clinton attacks Donald Trump for posing Pepe the Frog meme. I thought it was like a compliment because they, they do this for me, they do it for Trump. What does it mean? Well, so it's this is a long story. Anybody who wants to go on the Internet and look this up, it's a rabbit hole that's really hilarious that, that, that is fun to go down and check out. But essentially, um, a long time ago, a, a meme was created um, but, uh, in, in the depths of the Internet. Uh, it was this Pepe meme, and it's a frog, and it used to be a uh, feels good, man. So when people were telling a story that made them feel good, that was kind of funny, they would post this, this meme. And what's happened recently is we all know about Hillary Clinton calling 50% of uh, Trump's followers deplorable people. Well, what that did is it triggered somebody that posted a meme uh, that was based on the movie of, what was the movie? The Expendables, which shows Donald Trump at the front, and it's got Pepe over his shoulder, and then it has people like yourself and Milo Yiannopoulos and Roger Stone. And John, uh, uh, Donald Trump Jr. And, and Dr. Ben Carson. Exactly, and Donald Trump Jr. reposted this meme, and so the Hillary Clinton campaign has taken this as, uh, as, as Donald Trump is reposting a racist uh, symbol. And do you remember when he posted the, the, the star that is basically the five-pointed star that it, you know every every sheriff wears across the country. Well, I mean, I've actually had specials back when I was even doing my own photoshopping to put internet specials up for say a book or something where you do uh, the six-pointed star a lot of times or an eight-pointed or whatever. You, you never do a five-pointed to say special. That's one of the most common, and, and people showed. Disney ads, Barbie doll ads, truck ads, all with the same yellow or orange star, and they said he was against Jews because of that. Well, exactly, and that's just a simple sunburst, but it also shows, you know, how big a trouble the Hillary campaign is, is that they're reaching so far to create these absolutely, totally insane connections. I mean, they want to call us. So you've us. researched it. Is there any connection to this, this frog and <laughs> no, racism? I don't... No, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, to, it's, ab, it's patently ridiculous in the whole I mean, isn't internet. it like, like a fat lady on a treadmill or, or, or crazy lady on the internet? I mean, isn't it just a joke? Exactly. Well, it's a joke, but it's a way to sort of uh, emphasize a, a phrase or an idea and and the whole internet is laughing at the Hillary campaign right now because it's it's the equivalent. Well, of that's what's really evident is I don't claim to understand all these memes and stuff. They're fun. I know they're a joke. But when you claim you understand it and get it wrong, the internet turns against you. Oh, absolutely. Like they they're basically trying to weaponize this and use it against people that oppose Hillary. And the the irony of this to me is that so number one, if you go back ten to fifteen years. 
Hillary went to Donald Trump's wedding. They used to be, quote, friends. They were friendly, et cetera. And now she's trying to paint anybody who's even remotely associated with him well, as the what truth they call is, white a, nationalists. A, a, a real criticism of Trump if you're a super right-winger. I'm a libertarian, sure. constitutionalist patriot, but since Gary Johnson ruined that name, I'm, I'm just a paleoconservative who wants freedom. I mean, Trump is actually really has a lot of establishment modern liberal traits, uh, you know, Early on, even 30 years ago, talking to the advocate, pushing equal rights for gay people, uh, massively hiring minorities and women, putting them in positions of power, getting awards from Jesse Jackson. Uh, quite frankly, I don't really criticize all that. It's exactly. just that he's a little too close to the Clintons, but I can see he's you know basically standing up to him, double-crossing him, because he was 30 years ago against NAFTA and GATT and against globalism. So he's been consistent. Really, he's just a nationalist who's fiscally conservative, a little bit liberal, uh, when it comes, to, uh, you know, to his social issues, but whatever, he's not out to get the country. The claim that he's this big right-wing racist guy that hates gay people and Mexicans is horse manure. Absolutely, and that's that's one of the things that I find personally insulting is that they're trying to to rework the 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 the, the word nationalist and 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 try to associate it with racist or, or, or white power people which is no it just means we have our country we make our rules not foreign tpp megabanks buckley we're exactly. getting an article out on this thank you so much my friend absolutely i want to go to phone calls and other clips but i promise to go to your calls but since michael savage brought this up i thought i would bring up this clip uh, this is obama when he's running for office about to get elected 2008 saying we need a domestic security force just as big just as strong as our military and i went what is that that's like brown shirts in Nazi Germany or the, you know, commissars or whatever in Russia uh, and these youth brigades in China. So I went and looked it up, and sure enough, they were trying to organize with George Soros and Ford Foundation money, billions of dollars of organizing poor black youth and others with red uniforms, you couldn't make this up, to be, be, to be racially based. Not we're going to be anti-crime, we're going to be pro-free uh, market, learn how to start a business. Not we're going to go out and camp or go swimming or, you know, go horseback riding. I mean, I would give money to get kids, period, that are poor. In fact, I have done it, you know, out in the countryside, out doing things. I mean, you know, I really care about these kids. I care about my kids. I care about myself, so I care about them. I can't help it. But no, this was all organized into chip on your shoulder, race bait garbage, NFL, you know, America's the most evil country in the world because they want the globalists that already run the country want to finish us off now. They want to break us up and we're done. Uh, and my only hope is they can't use all this race baiting they pushed to create white racism on the other side. That's what they want. We need to come in with populism, Americanism, free marketism, which Trump's doing, and just open arms, boom, roll over this. And that's what's happening. That's why the globalists are so scared right now, because people really get now what's happening. Trump is pushing aside the Republican establishment, the Democratic establishment, he's a wedge for us behind him. It's happening. That's why Trump's real. Because what he's doing is irrevocably damaging to the New World Order. That's why they're in panic mode. That's why they're throwing everything they got, folks. There's no debate Trump's for real. Okay, zero. Now, can he be manipulated? Will he compromise? Is he perfect? All of us have to do some things in this world. You can't be a 100% purist, okay? But at the same time, I mean, here's an example. There are some ads on this network that are not mine that I haven't vetted that I don't agree with. But, I mean, you just radio stations, ads, nobody. You, you cannot run everybody else's lives. It's kind of like, it's it, you know, it's not mind your own business, but at a certain point, if I just sit here and try to be 100% pure, I'm going to be a basket case living under a bridge. I try to do the good thing. I'm honorable. I tell the truth. I personally try to make the best decisions. Do I work with evil people? No, I don't. But I cannot make everybody else conform to my level and standards, okay? I mean, it's that simple. And I'm not criticizing the network either. It, it's just that I personally, personally just won't take any sponsor, okay? And I understand that's how talk radio is. It can barely survive. I'm not judging anybody. It's just what I'm getting at is if Trump, you know, does some things like bring in the former director of the CIA under Clinton, that's a little creepy. But then I know that guy's been better than other CIA directors. I know he is against radical Islam. Uh, I know he actually says don't take Americans' rights kick the jihadis out of the country. So I see how Trump's getting sold on that. The point is, you cannot expect Trump to know everything and do everything right. I don't do everything right. But in, let's say 90% of what Trump's doing is so wonderful. There's another 10% I've got I'm questioning, I'm looking at. It ever gets to like 60, 40, I'm gonna have a big issue. You see, but here's the difference. I know Hillary and the globalists are out to bring him down and bring us down. It is a no-brainer.
All right, I'm going to come back and talk to Matt and then Ron and Kevin and Karen and Jennifer and others. 800-259-9231. And we're going to come back and play that domestic security force straight ahead that is made up of a bunch of angry, race-conditioned, basically the equivalent of black Ku Klux Klan. So since I mentioned it, here's Obama calling for his national domestic force of people just totally obsessed that they've been wronged and that white people are the enemy. Here it is. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. All right, I'm going to go to your phone calls. Roger Stone is popping in for 30 minutes at the start of the next hour. And David Knight will be hosting the fourth hour. Leanne McAdoo will be popping in with him. I've got a ton of news I haven't gotten to yet on Russia, the economy. There is going to be a jam-packed third hour. Um, I want to go to your calls right now. Thanks for holding. Matt in the great state of Michigan. Boy, I had family just up there vacationing. I didn't get to go on the Great Lakes. It looked like the Caribbean or something. And those sunsets, I know I have family forever. Even back in my grandma's day, my dad's mom would go up there once a year to vacation. How great it is at the end of the summer. I, I'm not trying to sit her into a travel log for Michigan, but... The photos I saw in the video, I am going to Michigan next year. Uh, Michigan ought to push itself for, for, for uh, vacationing, folks, but I'm digressing. Uh, Matt, go ahead for Michigan. Hey, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. I want to say thanks to your, your crew. They're, they're killing it. You're killing it. Uh, Savage and all the rest of the Patriots out there. Was I, that not I, crazy I hearing you know, Savage called me the field marshal, the leader? That's scary. It's, it's, it's nuts, man. You're there. You're there. Um, I wanted to make something, um, make a point. I've been, I've been uh, getting this feeling for, for, for a while now. Um, I think Clinton did not want to run to be president. Um, you know, her failed 2008. Um, and everyone knows that Obama. Yeah, she was, she was low energy then. So you smell a rat, you smell a, a fix. Yeah, I smell a fix. I think she was put in um, to beat Bernie because she's got the ground game. Sure. Um, I don't think they wanted. I don't think they wanted to use Obama's. Sure. She already had the organization. Yeah. You're right. Right. She's a, Obama's more geared towards probably the Bernies, Bernie supporters. So I think that would be harder, and they would discredit him if if something did come out. So they used Clinton. I think they had more like with the Benghazi and the emails. They know what all that with what's all. Sure, Hillary's that. totally controllable. Right. So they control her, you know. And then uh, once once it comes time, you know, um, if the science comes out with something big, um, you know, they'll 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 trump the news cycle, and you know, she'll be out. You know, putting if it's Kane that they really wanted in because Kane didn't have a chance against Bernie or whoever else. No, I mean, I think what you're saying is pretty plausible, but I mean, do you think she would fake being sick? Because, man, she looks like she's wearing Academy Award winning makeup then in acting because she really looks sick. Well, I think I think she's sick. I think that's one of the reasons why she wouldn't have run. You know, um, you know, and this is a, a win for them because they still can have some influence because they know, you know, uh, another dirty. Well, sure, they've got so much stuff. criminal stuff coming out that. They need to get in and just try to cover it up and then kind of hand the baton to somebody. And I, and I think that's clearly the plan. I don't, I don't think that's debatable. The problem is her brain tumor or whatever it is, the word is brain tumor from really good sources. Uh, that's what the Secret Service thinks. They don't know. They just say, look, she's getting worse. She's falling down all the time. Our word is brain tumor. I talked to high-level people, folks that were former you know, high-level CIA, current, you name it. They say Hillary has brain tumors and lung cancer. It's metastasized. And uh, she's going to be bye-bye very soon. I don't take any pleasure in that. I had a bunch of articles yesterday saying I took pleasure. I made it very clear. I said I'm in ecstasy that they've lied about her health and it's been exposed. And what we've been told about behind the scenes has been caught on tape. And they said, oh, he's really glad she's dying. No, I'm not. Like, I'll be sad if she doesn't repent before she dies. I mean, I don't want her to go to hell. All right, Matt, great points from Michigan. Uh, we're going to come back and talk to Ron and... Uh, Jennifer, Kevin, Karen, and others. And we've got, for a couple segments, um, former Trump campaign head, Roger Stone, joining us. And then I've got a clip from Russia. Russia's really concerned on their state-run media about Trump getting assassinated. Buckley is wound up today, popping in on the show. He was showing me more memes. I went back in his office. 
how people are making fun of Hillary's logo now because they've got all this national news claiming that this Pepe the Frog or Pepe the Toad meme has been around forever is racist. It's totally ridiculous. It means like winning, basically. It just means, oh, yeah, we're having a great time. We're winners. Uh, now they've come out with a new one making fun of Hillary's logo saying, oh, my gosh, it's an Islamic State symbol of flying a plane into the towers. Uh, but if you look at it, it, it really is red, you know, piercing through the blue. But you can say that kind of flips the colors. This is the Democrats that are really red, and the Republicans, you could say, that are blue, kind of blue bloods versus communist. Uh, but let's bring Buckley in about this new article. It's official. Hillary Clinton's logo is an act of terrorism. Buckley? I told him to come down during the five after. I said, come on over here in that little five-minute segment just during the break. We're grabbing the hook to get him. We're going to grab him. I said, in that five-minute little segment, we're going to go to you. And Buckley's like, I want to come on the show and talk about that. I said, yeah, well, let's do it. So you got to... You got to be there to do it. So here he comes running down the hall. Uh, yeah, Buckley, I said a little five-minute segment. I'm talking about that piece you talked about. Uh, go ahead and make your point. We, we, yeah, it's okay. You can go live. Just go live anytime. I'm sorry, I couldn't it's like hear I do you. it. 3 a.m. the I night. Boom, wake you. up. Go on the radio. So um, basically what has happened in this meme war, uh, as we were speaking, just about, just just uh, as this happened just now, is that uh, Pepe has put out, can you open up that link that I put in the folder, please? Is uh They've just now put out a, a re response to Hillary's accusation of the Pepe meme being a racist white nationalist meme. And now what they're doing is, is they've said that Hillary Clinton's um, logo looks like uh, a projectile or airplane smashing into two buildings. And why would they why would they do that? Why would Hillary Clinton? How evil of her do this it really actually looks like that she is the founder of islamic state how dare her put out such an insensitive pro-islamic state pro-al-qaeda pro 9 11 attack symbol buckley exactly will she apologize exactly and it's it's her and her daughter and her closest advisors have been uh have been putting up this uh, symbol that is basically showing uh, Islam attacking the United States, and how how dare she? I mean, let's put the shocking symbol back up. Exactly. I mean, I mean, look, they expose the evil racist toad. Exactly. With no evidence, this actually is an Islamic State image of the airplanes uh, hitting the towers. Hillary, how dare you? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, so basically the the level of absurdity that we've reached in this election has has peaked. I mean, it's gone far beyond. And they're and learning it's a two way street. Exactly. Exactly. But the thing that's interesting to me is that they're so tone deaf, they think that they're pulling a, a, a trick over on all the people that are out there in the world by, by misusing and misrepresenting these All they're symbols. doing is feeding the Internet's hunger. Exactly. They're feeding the Internet's hunger, and there will be more jokes and more memes and more ridicules. And the, the irony to me is that, that, that basically she's down. Right now she's been stumbling around. She's sick. She's been sort of... Uh, you know, it's been proven that she, her health is barely uh, consistent. She has to do interviews now by phone. They say, can we send a crew? And she goes, no. But Bill Clinton goes now on TV4. But everything's fine, Buckley. Exactly, exactly. So basically, this is a weird, weak little smoke screen that they're trying to put out right now. Um, and it's not working. It's backfiring on them in a huge way. I guarantee you that there's a lot of people that were probably maybe just even slightly skeptical about her that are, are, are now just totally absolutely well, sure well I, mean, I gotta tell you i mean if a frog is randomly racist uh a red arrow shooting through two buildings the towers she's saying i took down the towers i support islamic state i want to hurt america i mean if a toad is racist or a frog I, there's no evidence there this is actually huge evidence compared to her thin argument wow what an al-qaeda supporter now ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna get really serious here in a moment but but this is covering satire but it is serious Hillary has jumped the shark, claiming that if, if people make internet memes about toads or frogs, which have been around for a decade, it means, you know, having fun, that it's racist. Well, that's blown up in her face. The internet's now coming out saying her Hillary symbol is the World Trade Centers with an Islamic plane flying through it. And there's more evidence of that than there is of, you know, toad and frog memes being racist. These people are completely out of control. They're at war with truth and information. But now, there's a story on Infowars.com. We're on major Democratic Party websites, from the Huffington Post to you name it. Liberals are outraged after Trump kid, that's Donald Trump Jr., kills Triceratops that has been extinct for 25 million years and a pterodactyl extinct for 25 million years. They say the only reason they're doing it is because they have the money to do it. <laughs> 
and he goes out on the streets and Democrats go further and think it's wrong that Donald Trump Jr. is killing pterodactyls, flying lizards, and yes, triceratops, the main enemy of Tyrannosaurus Rex, the terrible lizard uh, in Latin. These people are from another planet, folks. So our reporter, Mark Dice, has this. I want him on tomorrow. we got to get Mark Dice on tomorrow. The video, we're going to play it after our guest leaves us. This, this meme war is just getting too insane. And i got to be honest. They call patriots, libertarians, paleoconservatives, uh, you know, these horrible creatures. Uh, what's the term that uh, Trump has been countering over and over again? That, that we're the deplorable, the, the deplorables, not the dispendables, but the deplorables. But now, what do you call these low-information voters, the, the zombies? I, I mean, I'm so sorry for them. I, I don't say all Democrats are, are, are evil, like, like they say all Republicans are. I'm not even saying they're evil. I'm like, they think Triceratops are being killed by the Trumps. No human ever living seen a Triceratops. The, uh, Donald Trump Jr. didn't kill a Triceratops. But if you just say you're for Hillary, they'll go along with you. This is crazy. You know, in the next few days, Roger Stone has huge news breaking about Hillary. He may give us a taste of it. We'll talk about her illness. We'll talk about the Trump campaign. We'll talk about the deplorables, where all this is going uh, right now. Uh, we'll also talk about our DrudgeReport.com linked article, where they say it's pneumonia, but Hillary is receiving on video and in photos a neurological test before she collapsed, the one you give with someone having an epileptic seizure which he clearly starts having. So Roger Stone uh, joins us, former Trump campaign head, Trump confidant, uh, worked in many administrations. Uh, we have stonecoldtruth.com. Uh, both of his books are sold at infowarsstore.com. We had Michael Savage on earlier. So much to cover, so much to go over. We have the vice presidential candidate, Tim Kaine, attacking me yesterday, saying I'm racist with no evidence. Uh, it seems like they've gone into total free fall. Am I wrong to say that they are crashing and burning currently, Roger Stone? You know, uh, if this wasn't so serious, I'd be laughing, Alex. I mean, this is an absurdity. Uh, notice how in the wake of the questions, very serious questions about Hillary's health, they're trying to revive the David Duke controversy. Please give me a break. Uh, Mike Pence made it very, very abundantly clear both Trump and Pence repudiate and do not want the support of David Duke. This is a smokescreen because they don't want to talk about Hillary's health. Now, in all honesty, what I feel here is vindication. Because only 10 days ago, and you played this on this network, uh, the Clinton people in a written statement blamed me for the entire question of her health. And by the way, I want to be clear, Roger. We don't normally talk about ourselves, but but I had a guest on yesterday, and he pointed out, Dr. Pachenik, we have to because we've been so demonized. We have been Drudge, you, myself, uh, all of us have been abs because we're, we've been the ones attacked. Matt Drudge, Roger Stone, Alex Jones, we're the main ones. We're supposedly the ones that, no, she's falling down everywhere. She's had brain surgeries. Her Secret Service has contacted us. We have been vindicated with a royal flush. Go ahead. No question about it. I mean, they said that this was a uh, a conspiracy theory put forward by right-wing conspiracy theorist Roger Stone. Well, conspiracy theory not. Uh, we're operating on the basis of our own observations. Now she collapses in 80-degree weather, first claiming it was heat prostration, then claiming it's pneumonia, at the same time saying that she was romping in Chelsea's apartment with her grandchildren. It just doesn't meet the smell test. Hillary Clinton has something visibly wrong with her, I doubt she has the stamina to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump for 90 minutes. No bathroom break. Where is she right now? No she's only doing break. phones. She's only doing phone conversations. Right. Well, that's because they don't want you to see her. I'm predicting right now she backs out of the debates uh, because she can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald J. Trump for 90 minutes without a break. Uh, we got to keep an eye open for the uh, earpiece. She clearly was wearing an earpiece. No conspiracy theory, folks. You can see it with your own two eyes. Now, based on her FBI interview regarding her email server, she clearly has no memory. Perhaps that's why she needs somebody feeding her the answers by earpiece. 
Uh, no conspiracy, folks. You can see the earpiece. And by the way, uh, you can't make this up. We looked at the photos they released, the campaign saying no one. They're so lazy, they pixelated and didn't even compress it a new layer. You can see where they blurred the earpiece. They are literally falling apart in front of us. Yeah, and, and uh, they have uh, changed her hairdo to try to cover the eyepiece. There's something very intrinsically wrong. Now, and by the way, if folks say she's their own woman, as you said earlier, we were talking this morning, they have the guy running up beside her when someone asks a question saying, it's okay, it's okay. She is in and out of reality. The word is a brain tumor, Roger. Well, look, I, I don't know whether it's Parkinson's or epilepsy or a brain tumor. I've been attacked, I've been approached uh, and uh, contacted by numerous uh, eminent and prominent doctors who just on the basis of their observations have put forward various theories. Well, the brain tumor causes the epilepsy and the Parkinson's. Well, that, that may be. Here's what I know. Uh, High-level Democrats have begun talking about replacing her on the ticket. Were she to be incapacitated or were, were her to drop or be unable to move forward, the Democratic National Committee chooses in one meeting uh, her replacement. Uh, and the word and I'm told those meetings are ongoing. That's now admitted. So who do you think they may pick? I mean, I mean, I was hearing from you this morning about a certain woman. Yes, I think that this uh, that they would go to. Uh, well, I don't think my source, who's a very high level and prominent Democrat, tells me that they would go to Michelle Obama. They can't resist the feminist wing of their party. These women are salivating over the first woman president, even if it's Hillary. Uh, and therefore, they would brook no dissension from the feminists by choosing uh, Michelle Obama. The disdain for the Clintons by Barack and Michelle Obama is well known. Uh, Joe Biden has, a, has a, a, a little bit of a grabby problem with women and with children. They know that old Uncle Joe would not stand up in a campaign. Uh, Tim Kaine would be giving away the franchise. No, I'm almost certain. Hillary Clinton will be replaced by Michelle Obama uh, if she uh, throws in the towel. But meanwhile, the Democrats' main concern is that Donald Trump Jr. is hunting triceratops. Yeah, hunting animals that literally don't exist uh, in our time. This is the hysteria of the left. Anything to change the subject from the question of Hillary's health. Roger, you've got a lot of their big bombshells here, but overall, what do you make of this time? I mean, I know you're a realist, not an optimist, so am I. I gotta tell you, we are kicking their ass right now. I mean, they are in deep crap. Well, I give Steve Bannon enormous credit for stabilizing uh, the good ship Trump. Trump is really performing a as a candidate. I think he's- Yeah, he seems like he's picking up great energy from being around these patriots. Well, and not only that, but this misstep of her uh, branding uh, you and I uh, and Milo and others as deplorables. And uh, look, saying I'm, we have no right to exist. Don't forget that. Well, look, I, yeah, kind of like Israel, we have no right to exist. Look, uh, I'm proud to be a deplorable if that means I'm thrown into a grab bag with you uh, and many other patriots. But I don't like the fact that Hillary is denigrating average people, house homemakers, farmers. It shows her disconnect that Obama got caught with bitter clingers in a secret meeting. She's out in speeches saying half are bad. Her minions say we're all bad. Let's talk about that disconnect, because I think this is the magic moment. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, when I put up the meme that had photos of the most prominent deplorables, Trump, Spence, uh, Ivanka, uh, Donald Jr., Eric, Alex Jones, uh, and others, the left went absolutely crazy because there's a frog there, some frog who uh, is put there because uh, he's so cocky. I'm proud to be in this meme. Uh, the Hill wrote about it. I think last time I looked, there were 10,000 people who had retweeted it. Uh, we're, it. We're mocking them. See, the left has no sense of humor. These folks have no sense of humor. Uh, but this reminds me of Mitt Romney in the 47%. When he uh, wrote off 47% of the voters, why the sky, the skies fell in. It was Armageddon. The mainstream media went crazy. He just she, mildly said 47% are being taken care of. They don't care. She's saying we're deplorable. Well, and, and she denigrates average people. She's denigrating Trump's voters who are supporting him in good faith. So uh, it's elitism is what it is, Alex. Uh, and to me, it's it's repugnant, which is why I chose to mock her with that particular image. You're absolutely right, and 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 they just uh, 
she's obviously deteriorating quickly, and, and I've got sources that say it is brain tumor metastasization. The first tumor removed 2012. I mean, we have the Secret Service that said she's got lifts on the vehicles, is falling down. You see it. I mean, that's real Secret Service. You were there with us when we were like mobbed by the Secret Service like rock stars. I've never seen them act like that, but they've seen the criminality. Uh, I just think that um, how are they going to strike back, though, Roger Stone? Well, I think they're getting painted into a quarter corner there. I think that one of the reasons that they are panicky is because the negative campaign plan to just uh, disqualify Trump has failed. They, they've, they pulled their whole bag of tricks. He's a bigot. He's a racist. He's mentally unstable. He's trigger happy. He'll start a war. All those things are false. The American people aren't buying. And that's why they're panicky, because in the 1980s playbook that they use, this should have blown Trump away. This should be a 10-point race today. And it's not. It's either even or Trump may be slightly ahead. Uh, her candidacy is imploding before our very eyes. It just shows you two things. One, that the power lust and the greed of the Clintons is unabated. With both of them in poor health, when both of them having lacking the stamina for a national campaign, they still are grabbing for the golden ring. Then secondarily, the other thing we see is that their decades-old abuse of the Secret Service, who they've called pigs and who they treat like servants, comes back to bite them when Secret Service agents leak the fact that she is gravely ill and that she has no stamina. So uh, they have reaped what the Clintons have sown. What do we do next? Well, I think that we continue exactly where we are. All of this, Alex, increases the odds that they will attempt to steal this election through machine manipulation. Uh, that's why I started StopToSteal.org. That's why we are organizing uh, scientifically conducted exit polls that we can compare to the machine results in a, on a precinct by precinct basis in targeted counties and targeted states where we suspect the steal will be afoot. I also commend to you Dr. Richard Davis's program, which will be announced shortly, Poll Mole, building a national multi-million sample daily poll so we can show the voters where this uh, race really is. Those are key programs that can be used to ensure that we have an honest election. All of this tempts the Clintons and the machine Democrats to steal this election, not just through voter fraud, but through machine manipulation. No, folks, it's not far-fetched. No, it's not outlandish. It's not, as Barack Obama said, ridiculous. Terrific piece on Fox last night with Brett Baer talking about multiple examples of people voting multiple times, people voting in several states at the same time. One guy- Sure, sure, our audience time. is informed, but let me ask you this then. With everything they say blowing up in their face, like a Greek tragedy or biblically, uh, oh, well, there's no election fraud, but we're federalizing it. Oh, we're not sick, but we're falling down and having convulsions. It just seems like history is on our side. I mean, th th there seems to be magic in the air. People I know that aren't even religious are saying it seems like God's doing this. Well, the large number of African Americans just come up to me in the street, recognize me from Infowars and other places as Trump's guy. They don't even know my name, but they want to high five me. Uh, this whole idea that Trump is a racist is going to get disproven on Election Day when I predict to you he gets the highest percentage of African-American votes of any Republican in my lifetime. He's going to. Well, the polls already show that. And that's what's freaking them out is that. They're 54 days out from the election and everything they're doing is turning into crap. Well, the Clintons want to keep black folks on the plantation. Donald Trump wants to make them prosperous, wants to get them a piece of the American pie wants to make them employers, not employees. And black folks I talk to get it. They totally get it. They're tired of being used and and uh, and uh, forsaken by the Democrats uh, at election time. If you look at the employment statistics for African Americans or for Hispanics for that matter, under this current president or under Bill Clinton, they are disgraceful. I guarantee you Donald Trump can do better. And as you say, they are, well, globalism is designed to make us poor. So if he just takes his, you know, the foot off our neck, it'll help. Exactly. But, but you mentioned Tim Kaine, the, the VP candidate, who they're trying to float back there in the background, but you think it'll be Michelle Obama. He comes in, mentions David Duke yesterday, who has no connection to Trump, 
and then ties it into me. Uh, I mean, why are they going after us so much? Here's that clip. It's very clear to all of us that the Trump campaign has given a platform. You can call them whatever you want, the alt-right movement or others. But when uh, when David Duke is doing robocalls saying vote for Donald Trump and others uh, who are kind of at the very fringe of the conspiracy movement, like Alex Jones, are being kind of incorporated uh, into the campaign in ways, it's a, or even the recent choices of campaign management, this is something that is really important. And I okay, think so now he connects. Call it out. David Duke to myself and Stephen Bannon with no proof. I mean, this is outrageous. I'm kind of disappointed in all honesty that he didn't mention me in all honesty. It's it's gravely disappointing. Look, the Communist Party of the United States has endorsed Hillary. There are Ku Klux Klan chapters that have endorsed Hillary. How come we don't talk about that? How come that's never in the mainstream media? I'll tell you why. Because it's extraneous. And that was extraneous. By the way, the T-shirt showing with the open shirt Really bad look. Really bad look. I know you got some big news breaking the next few days at StoneColdTruth.com and InfoWars.com. Can we get into that a little bit or should we save it? Well, I think that uh, that there's going to be a public examination of how and why Gaddafi was removed in Libya uh, that is going to truly shock people. Now, I don't want to telegraph our punches, so I don't want to get any further out there. But let's but just say it's WikiLeaks level. Without any question, it will rock this entire race. Let's well, leave it. Uh, right. Please coordinate closely. I mean, I know you're saying you're going to let us put it out, but please coordinate closely because I want to get this. This is powerful. I mean, this is smoking uh, gun. Yeah, I, it is. Uh, it is just around the bend. There has been enormous research done regarding the removal of Gaddafi uh, that will speak to both Hillary's motive, means, uh, and the way it was done that I think is going to shock people. Let's sum it up this way. Black lives matter unless you live in Libya, in which case Hillary borrows a billion dollars to bomb you into submission. And Gaddafi was ready to walk. Without she just wanted to blow the hell out of the country. Well, too many of her major benefactors at the Clinton Foundation had a major stake in the removal of Gaddafi. Now, we don't know where his wealth went. We don't know where his world-class weapons went. But we do know that he had agreed to all the conditions uh, for uh, to leave the country. Uh, this is a stunning story that the American people need to know. Wow. Roger Stone, stonecoldtruth.com. Um, how do you expect him to strike back? Where else do you see this? I mean, uh, other areas we should be watching. Well, uh, the, all the, the only option left to open to them is to come up with some smear of Donald Trump. Uh, but they're getting to the bottom of their bag of tricks. They played all their classic bag of tricks. I'm sure you remember the totally phony lawsuit filed against uh, Trump claiming uh, by an unnamed woman claiming that he had raped her. Completely and totally bogus, false, uh, meant to distract from Bill Clinton's relationship with the child molester and the convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. And by the way, Hillary's top aides, Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, uh, and the White House Social Secretary, all of their direct private phone numbers found in Jeffrey Epstein's personal phone book when he was uh, uh, arrested. That's right, Clinton so, flying around on it. So we have a tripling, quadrupling down on lies, a desperate corporate whore media that could do anything. They may say Donald Trump is eating little children. I mean, just get ready for anything. But they're so discredited, it's not going to work. Well, and the toothpaste cannot be put back in the tube. We're not in the 1980s, where the Clintons could mau mau and browbeat the three major networks into covering a story and pretending it's not news. That That's just not going to work anymore. Uh, there's too much exchange of Is it fair to say they're in a total panic right now? Yes, I think they're in meltdown mode because Trump was supposed to be easy to dispatch. Look, if you go back and you um, read, I remember, he wasn't going to win the nomination. He wasn't, he just, it was all delusion. Well, if you go back and read Hamilton Jordan's memoirs, he tells you that Jimmy Carter fervently wanted to run against Ronald Reagan. He felt that, that George Bush or John Connolly or Howard Baker would have been much tougher. So Reagan was his preferred opponent. Massive miscalculation. Now I believe the Clintons have made the exact same miscalculation. Uh, in Donald Trump, they have a man of enormous courage who has no fear about going anywhere 
in the Clinton And that's why era. he's winning so many people, marching into those churches, getting out on those hot tarmacs, circumventing the Black Lives Matter thugs, charging in, giving two-hour speeches on 115-degree tarmacs. I mean, it's just it's pure Americana. Well, headed to Baltimore today to once again underline the fact that the policies of Obama and Clinton have failed African Americans, have failed our inner cities. Alex, let me say this. Trump is going to win. Mark my words. And by the way, you've, you've never said that before, but now you're saying Trump's going to win. I know you've got to go, but can you come back and do two minutes on Trump winning? Or have you got to go? I understand. Uh, you know what? I have another... Uh, I've got to go. All right, Roger, we'll talk to you soon. Come back tomorrow uh, then. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Friday for sure. I want you to come back and elaborate on Trump winning. Stone now says Trump is going to win. All right, thank you so much. We'll be back. We're up. All right, Mark and Jennifer... And Ron and Kevin and Karen, too. I'm going to get to all of you here in five minutes. I'm going right to you, bam, bam, bam. But first, I've got to air this report because it's been filed for three days. It's so important to understand what the globalists like Hillary are pushing on the other side of this agenda. Because they're just the front people. But what's the actual plan? It's modern serfdom, feudalism, the end of the Renaissance world. Here's John Bowne's report. Agenda 2030, because they've now finished Agenda 21. Now the UN calls it Agenda 2030. This is a microcosm of Austin, Texas, deep in the heart of Texas, occupied by the globalists, bringing their program of control in. Here it is. Globalism already exists in the United States. Sprawled out behind me is 31,708 acres of the Balcones Canyonland Wildlife Preserve. The preserve is under the authorization of the 1973 Endangered Species Act, basically an extension of the United Nations Agenda 21. Even though Austin's population grows by 110 people every day, development of this prime acreage is not permitted. And furthermore, with the United Nations recent implementation of Agenda 2030, the globalist reach is finding its way into our very neighborhoods and lives. President Obama didn't go on a tour of Asia just to be consistently insulted for being a globalist pawn. Obama was attending the G20 in Hangzhou, China, signing away the fleeting remnants of the United States sovereignty over to the globalist 2030 agenda. Among the totalitarian horror this agenda includes are mandatory vaccinations worldwide under the guidance of Bill Gates, the unleashing of GMO technology on the natural world in the guise of feeding the hungry. I mean, genetically modified sounds Frankensteinish. Drought resistance sounds really something you want. Carbon taxes that will increase poverty and create a surf-like energy consumption. An introduction of a global tax that will make the IRS and the Federal Reserve look like child's play. And a global implementation of smart grid technology that will be beta tested in Africa under the $7 billion of U.S. taxpayer money Obama donated to the project titled Power Africa. The socialist tentacles of Agenda 2030 now reach right into our own backyards. As as Obama, in a last-ditch effort, aims to essentially transform America by giving the poorest of neighborhoods an equitable stake in the richest of neighborhoods. The Austin, Texas City Council is hiring, not electing, what will be known as the Chief Equity Officer. Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon have already paved the way for this socialist enterprise. Three candidates are in contention for the position here in Austin, Texas. Austin Mayor Steve Adler wrote, similar to the sustainability office, which has a focus on the environment, i.e. Agenda 21, we should consider the creation of an equity office, have chief equity officer or propose an alternative that provides such a dedicated office. Such an office could advance racial and ethnic equity by looking at all the city does with a focus on equity, gathering equity data, and creating dashboards, advocating for and perhaps staffing the quality of life commissions. The work would focus Focus on tackling institutional barriers based on race and ethnicity and addressing those issues that interfere with access and equitable service delivery. In response, Austin City Council Member Ora Houston replied, Mayor, this is a great idea. Equity is a issue of class as well as ethnicity and or culture. So we are there building and, and drawing the maps and holding people accountable. I think equity means that we 
I guess, denounce the sense of a system that was created for us and start looking at how do we build our own systems the way that works for the community that's screaming that we need equity. One of the um, things that we see as being really effective across the country is use of a racial equity tool. And what that means is that when decisions are being made, that we are considering race in the impacts. Whether the decision is actively perpetuating the status quo or working to change the status quo. The history of change in the United States is the history of organizing. And the reason why we have had change is because of community organizing, putting pressure on government. The main goal of the micromanagement of communities cloaked in the disguise of diversity is to eventually break communities down into sustainable megacities, a one-world system that will follow the implementation of the United Nations Strong Cities Network, replacing our local police forces, the watering down or complete elimination of the Second Amendment under the enforcement of Secretary of State John Kerry's signing of the Small Arms Treaty Incredible. and an engineered global depression. United Nations manipulation of the human population has become a very stark reality. A reality you won't be hearing about from the mainstream media until it's too late. John Bound for Infowars.com. John Bound is so amazing. Uh, I just love him. Uh. He is so just on target, cutting through. No wonder his dad won Peabody so as a major journalist as well. It's, it's in the blood. But if you look at this, we live under UN control. But the globalists, people say, oh, the UN doesn't run America. Well, that's true. The globalist robber barons, a hundred and something years ago, getting their butt kicks by the American people, they went and created it, gave it the land to transfer power to it, and then have it dictate to us. And... That's why the Justice Department has announced, oh, we're going to move, quote, minorities, basically forcibly, because they're on welfare, to your rural area, build a big building, and then just create all this strife and make everyone be, quote, racially based. So you wonder how they'll put us all in these compact, controlled areas. They'll bring people in, white, black, it doesn't matter, who are dependent on the system, who will then vote in your local government to sign over local control of all the land by voting to the UN and to the globalists. And the big banks, the big insurance companies, the big building companies, they're all basically exempt from all this. God help us. See, it's about what group you're in and where you live will be equitable. And we're going to integrate your houses. And you know, Germany a few years ago banned any new construction of single parent homes because sing or not single parent, single family homes. Because families are bad. Imagine they're saying you can't have a house with your kids and you. What? Because that's a unit. That's allegiance. That's people together. They already banned men in the house for black people if you want welfare. And look what that did to that community. And now they're banning families for everybody. And they got a Gardasil shot, especially for Hispanics, because they love you so much and want you to inherit America. Don't take the shot if you do. I mean, these people are so evil. All right, I want to go to your calls. I said I'd go to your calls. And I've got a bunch of health news, a bunch more doctors coming out, even Democrats, you name it, saying Hillary... He has obviously got serious neurological problems, probably from a brain tumor. That's the only thing that does stuff like this. Now we're going to go to Mark, who's been holding. We're going to go to Jennifer. We're going to go, who's been holding the longest? Karen's been holding the longest. Then I'm just going to go Kevin, Ron, Jennifer, Mark. Thanks for holding. Karen, you're on the air. Welcome. Yes. Uh, first, I want to preface that my father was a World War II hero, and we share the same grandfather that George Washington uh, had, and and so we have been uh, very patriotic. Um, I'm a strong Trump supporter, and I am a Mormon, and I'm very upset about the the, the fact that there's so many sites saying that the Mormons are against um, um, Trump. It's not true. Almost everyone I know is for Trump, but they could use that. When, if, when they cheat in Utah, you know, to say... Oh, Look, well, I, I agree. All the Mormons I know are supporting Trump. I wouldn't call Glenn Beck, a, you know, a real uh, Mormon uh, and, and all the rest of it. And I totally agree it's a red herring. They're getting folks ready uh, to basically steal Utah. I agree with your statement. The thing that I'm very concerned about is the immigration. Um, and they are... Uh, we had Catholic charities come in to tell us how we could serve the, the, the immigrants. And by the way, I'm not bashing Catholics, but if you want to talk about who's manipulating this election, it's the Pope. And that Jesuit communist New World Order, Tim Kaine. The problem 
is they're giving money to these organizations, these charities, to bring them in. Um, that they, they, I tried to get a place for a homeless citizen, a young lady, and they said she had to go to a homeless shelter. I said, you mean they, she, did they take precedence over a, a citizen? Well, yeah, they've been in uh, camps for a very long time. They're giving them everything. I, said, I know, but again, again, and these poor illegals are running desperate, collapsed countries that the globalists literally came in and gutted using the same technology the last 50 years. We are all victims of the New World Order. The problem is it doesn't matter. These people are like water. I need water to live. I love water. But if the dam breaks, it's going to kill me if I'm down in the valley. So these poor illegals, everybody, who are just desperate. They're, they're flooding, and we're going to be knocked over by it. How do we somehow wake them up? I don't know, but it's an incredible situation we're facing. But Providence is here. People are waking up, and we're, we're facing a 21st century war. This is a technotronic technocracy 21st century war it's high tech but if folks will just learn about it like they do about football or baseball people have the smarts we can defeat it but you people have to stop war gaming fake stuff meant to take up your time like crossword puzzles and the nfl you got to start war gaming this okay i know a lot of men that are just as smart as i am are smarter but they're just locked in their own little fantasy land same thing for women you've got to decide you want to be part of this historic fight you've got to decide no matter what color the pigment of your skin is, you want humanity to succeed. You want to cut through all this scientific BS. The globalists are arrogant, folks. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. There's seven and a half billion people. If 5% are awake to this, it's game over. We've already got more than that. Okay? That's why they're panicking right now. And human populations can flip-flop very quickly away from globalism. That's how humans work. It'll seem like 5% are awake, and then suddenly, boom, half the population wakes up in a day. That's why the New World Order is, I'm telling you, freaking out. Roger Stone is an incredible pessimist, and he is privately and publicly telling me this is history, total rout of the enemy happening right now. Now, they might set off a nuke, folks, in a major city and blame it on the Patriots. Anything's possible, but no one's going to buy it. It's going to be a rough road. But the beginning of the end of the New World Order has begun. Thank you, Karen. Let's go ahead and talk to who's up next. Uh, Kevin in Illinois, you're on the air. I just want to thank you for everything you're doing, man. Great job. Uh, I got a little theory to bounce off of you. First of all, I think Hillary is really sick. I think Hillary's camp has known about her health for a long time. And I think that they... Just know that the, they just felt that she would be more electable than Kane. So the plan was to use her to get Kane elected from the very beginning. No, I think that's the crowdsourcing common sense. And I think you're right. I think that was the old plan. Now she's so discredited, though, and the media is so discredited that they think she's going to lose now. So what do they do next? Um, I don't know what that. Uh, I hope it, I hope that uh, Michelle Obama's not on the table. I just kind of threw up a little bit in my mouth when I even thought about that. But um, I don't know what they do, but I know it's going to involve lying and uh, deception. You're absolutely right. What else is on your mind, my friend? Um, I'm just uh, spreading the word, you know, um, been spending a lot of time on forums and stuff and inviting people to check out InfoWars and uh, become a patriot and um, basically just uh, sounding the horn. Well, God bless you, brother. I want to be clear about something. Even if you just love God and don't want to hurt innocent people and aren't out to get folks, you're a patriot and God loves you. Patriot just means you're pro-human. You're pro, they'll say patriarchy, it doesn't even mean that. It just means you're pro the order that humans have set up that God set up. That's what a patriot is. A patriot is not out to get people. Uh, it means the right hand, basically. If you want to get into the occult, the Illuminati, you know, they're all the left-hand path. But if you look at this, we are at an incredible moment right now. And make no mistake, no one's going to tell you the great job you've done. You're not going to get a pat on the back from the mainstream media. You're going to just feel like you're out there on your own warning people and some of them laugh at you or whatever. They're doing that because they're scared, brother. But I'm going to tell you something right now. It is you, the men and women of every color, every creed. I'm not going to say race. We're all the same race. That know the truth. That are already moving mountains. 
you're not just part of the info war, brother. You're it. When you take action, when you spread the word, when you speak up, when you hit your knees and pray to God, it moves mountains. The enemy is panicking right now because you are on the move. Just know you're not famous, so you don't know that. You don't have that perspective. Believe it. Believe it. Let's go ahead and take a, another call here. Let's talk to Jennifer in the great state of Texas, now under FEMA Region 6. Go ahead. Hi. I'm a person with epilepsy. I am also a person who has had viral pneumonia. Now, when I had viral pneumonia, I had to go to the emergency room. There was testing, which took time. I had hospital observation, uh, medication. Oh, I've had it, I too. Was I, was in, I was in bed like 10 years ago for a week with it. Right, and I was told, do not go out into public. Maintain as much distance between yourself and your young daughter as possible. Uh, cough into tissues. We've seen Hillary cough into her bare hands. And I think the reason they wanted to avoid the emergency room was because it would have demonstrated she does not have pneumonia. Now to the epilepsy, I have no doubt in my mind that Hillary Clinton has epilepsy is a result of the neurological medical emergencies she has experienced uh, with my seizures before and then also post-dictal after seizures. I have extreme imbalance, states of confusion, difficulty communicating, uh, recognizing uh, March of last year, I had uh, tonic-clonic seizures known as grand mal. And when I was in a postictal period, uh, they asked me, who is this man in the room with you? I don't know. It was my husband of 24 years. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who he was. Another concern is there is something called SUDEP, which is sudden unexpected death of epileptic patient. Well, that's so, right. I mean, yeah. I've had two family members, one of them still alive, that got epileptic type symptoms from from. Uh, trauma, one from a motorcycle wreck, one from falling off a building when there's a little kid playing with other kids. And I've sat there so many times when they start having a beginning of a seizure, I guess a petty mall or whatever they call it, and I've seen them have the big ones. I've seen the head go in the circle. I mean, everybody who's had family that's epileptic knows, or coworkers, what this looks like. And the media telling us we're idiots, I mean, it, it, it really discredits them. Another concern with her being incapacitated is, are we going to have a situation like Woodrow Wilson's turn? Where we have for, a for a year where he was out of control and we had Edward Mandel House running stuff. Right, and his wife. So are we going to have a situation where Bill Clinton and a close aide, <clears throat> Uma Abedin, which might be a Valerie Jarrett-type figure, are they going to be operating the executive brand? Another fabulous point. We're out of time, Jennifer. Glad you held to say that. I'm going to come back and play a few clips of more doctors coming out and talking about something seriously wrong with this lady. And then we are going to go to Mark uh, and uh, Phil, Tony, Danny, and others. And then David Knight and Leanne McAdoo are going to be taken over as well. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Now, the fourth hour is picked up by a lot of our affiliates now. It's usually hosted by another one of our great anchors or researchers. A lot of times I co-host it. I'll be 15 or 20 minutes in the next hour because there's this Russia piece that's exclusive to the United States that we've had translated by Daria uh, into English, uh, dealing with their view on the election and threats to Donald Trump. Will he be assassinated? So that's coming up. If your station doesn't carry it, Infowars.com forward slash show. You can find the free audio and video feeds uh, and see this exclusive report we're about to, uh, to premiere from Russia One, state-run media over there. And I'll continue with your calls as well. But I, I should have covered this at the very start of the show. We had Dr. Drew come out a few weeks ago and say, the medicine she's got her on will kill her. And the guy's not even a conservative. This is crazy. I want to talk to Hillary. I want to help her. One of the top board-certifying doctors out there. I mean, he's a doctor's doctor. Boom, fired. Well, will Sanjay Gupta get fired? He said, we still don't know a lot of things about Hillary Clinton, and we need to know. But we've got a prominent Muslim American MD, he was on Newsmax TV, said Hillary didn't pass out from dehydration. And he says the same thing that Dr. Steve Pachenik and others have said, and other medical doctors that are very close to me, I'll leave it at that, that don't want to go on air because this country's in so much trouble. They're, they're scared to, saying, look, it's, it's brain tumor. Um, or it's major heart trouble. Well, the word is it's, it's tumors in her lungs and which affects the heart and in the brain. Uh, but let's go ahead and play this clip of Dr. Uh, Zudia Jasser 
with Stephen Mazerberg. Uh, here it is. As an internist, I do this every day. And pneumonia is a disease that presents not only with cough, but fevers, chills, and other things. Um, if she was passing, you know, what she had was a syncopal episode. She passed out. That's either cardiovascular or neurologic. Now, her team wants us to believe that this is dehydration. She didn't appear to be dehydrated, and that doesn't get fixed in 90 minutes. Uh, so I can tell you that yeah. it really appears. And I, if I let a patient with syncope leave my office and not get admitted and get evaluated immediately, that would be malpractice. So there's something going on. I mean, even if you look at the reaction of her assistance when she passed out, it almost seemed to appear something they've been familiar with. Nobody was really shocked that she was uh, buckling and her knees were That's buckling. That's what the Secret so Service told us every hour. cerebrovascular accidents, strokes that she's had before that are just exacerbated when she gets ill, or it's some type of uh, neurologic condition, or she had some underlying uh, cardiovascular disease, either atrial fibrillation or heart failure that keeps presenting itself. So the reason we are speculating is because just like Dr. Ben Carson said earlier today, you know, she has a disease of dishonesty. And on the anniversary of Benghazi, she she had a health episode that the American people deserve to know what the reality is. And I think any physician worth their salt knows that people don't pass out from pneumonia, but from other things either. Well, that's right. Or and, 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 right. And again, it's not pneumonia that she just got. So that's Newsmax.com. I want to get that gone. Please get that guy on, guys and, and, and ladies. Touch to the crew. And I've got like four more clips. It's like every day there's just all these doctors coming out. 70 plus percent of one of the biggest surgeon, uh, you know, and, and doctor organization in the country says clearly there's something wrong with her. Folks, the Secret Service said, hey, we got information from you for you. And I'm standing there with guys in their suits at the RNC. And I'm like, OK. Uh, and my gut was this is for real. They're all smiling at us and everything. You know the truth. I'm like, well, here's Joe Biggs. Here, Joe, you handle it. Uh, and when I was even scared of the Secret Service, it's just like, you know, you get exhausted getting all these leaks. And I said, here, Joe, you want to handle it? You do it. Because Joe was all excited. They contact us. They tell her she's fallen down more than once an hour. We don't know what it is, but they're going to have to make an announcement. I mean, this is getting bad. She is falling apart. we got special vehicles for her. You know, we've got all, just come to the event. She'll see what we're talking about. We went. It was true. They didn't lie to us. And now it's clearly getting worse by the minute. We're going to go to break. we got more of these clips, but I want to take some calls. I want to get to this Russia piece. Your station doesn't care the fourth hour. I hope they would, but be sure and support them and their sponsorship. Uh, make a donation to your local stations. Uh, but we're going to be on the fourth hour, Infowars.com forward slash show. Infowars Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central as well. Dave and I can be co-hosting with me. It's all coming up. I'm just doing 10, 15 minutes because i got meetings i got to go to about launching the new big free app next week. Oh, it's massive. Mm, they're going to really hate this. So it's all coming up. Support the broadcast. 30, 40% off affordable foods ends the day. We need the funding, plus you need the food to be self-sufficient. Infowarsstore.com. Let's go ahead and take phone calls. Mark in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, let's call talk shows. I want everyone to set their uh, watch for from 5 to 7 on Mondays and call KFAX. I was talking to the talk show host on KFAX on Mondays from 5 to 7 about uh, what Hillary said about you. And call all talk shows, listeners, and you may or may not want to say that you want to talk about uh, well, I should John. point out you're on KOMY. I think the station, once you plug another station, well, I guess that's in Santa Cruz. I mean, sure, I, I, but I what, just call and point out that we don't spew racism here. We, we spew the opposite. Yeah, exactly. And look, one month ago, I was knocking on doors here in San Jose, being very polite, just saying, good morning, ma'am or sir. Would you please turn your radio to KOMY 1340? And I did that for maybe an hour and a half, and then the cops showed up. And then I says, well, that's all I'm doing, officer. I'm knocking on people's doors and then asking them to call three or four people to tune in. You were interviewing. That is free speech. Out. You're not selling yeah. anything. Their, their, their ordinances cannot stop you from free speech knocking on doors. Exactly. And this is big time because, Hillary, think about this. God but what you're doing is so language. beautiful. You're doing what Nigel Farage said. Put the walking boots on. Get in the streets. That's what will defeat them. Exactly. Well, were the cops are shaming out, themselves okay. trying to foist an anti-free speech agenda? Because I've met the Santa Cruz cops. A lot of them seem like they're pretty awake. 
Oh, yeah, they are. And it worked out for good because I drove down Meridian, hit every uh, Starbucks and coffee shop, and I just walked in there and said, folks, I have a brief announcement to make. Tune your radios to KOMY 1340 right now or InfoWars on your computer. And because uh, this guy is interviewing uh, Roger Stone, who got Trump to run. This is big time information. See, Roger Stone, remember when he said that a couple of weeks ago? He says, I'm the one that got Roger Stone to. I mean, no, it's true. I mean, Stone's the one of the key guys. He's very humble about it, but it is true that, uh, that Stone got him to run in 2002. So, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, think about it. Hillary said that you actually thought Oklahoma City was an inside job. Well, wait a minute. I think it was Alex Jones, not Rush Limbaugh, that interviewed uh, Don Browning, Craig Roberts, Terrence Yakey. I mean, interviewed all the testified. cops, everybody. They know the names of the feds. They caught them planting the bombs, for God's sakes. <laughs> I know. I mean, I mean, let me tell you, the Clintons bombed Oklahoma City. They should get it straight. The Clintons, not America. They always go, uh, he says America bombed Oklahoma City. No, the Clintons did. He says America. The, 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 I've been on shows where they go, you say the New York police bombed the World Trade Center? I said, criminals in our government allied with radical Islam did it, and they stood down, and NORAB was ordered to stand down. I had that from the sources at the time. It's all in the news now. But they always misrepresent they build straw men. It's all they can do. Stay with us. We'll be back with the big Russian news. This is big. Uh, there's so much news it makes my head spin up on Infowars.com. Hillary's former Secret Service agent, there's something seriously wrong with Clinton. And he goes into talking about it. I want to get Mr. Burns back on the broadcast. Gary Byrne says Hillary has another seizure and her campaign is covering it up. Yeah. And the difference is she's been having seizures since 2012. But she didn't have one once a week. She's having them every hour or less. And the Secret Service told us, listen, they don't tell us anything. They hate us. She's falling down every hour. She is hitting her head. She has to be helped in the vehicle. She's in bed a lot of the time. Well, they won't tell us, but we think it's Parkinson's or brain tumors. Just go to the events. You've got reporters. The, uh, we've told other media. They're all cowards. Go look at what's going on. We get that there's like stretchers and ambulances and her behind a tent. She comes out hacking. This is last Monday. I mean, she's screwed, folks. She got this special van with the lowering the deal down. She's falling into it. She got this low rider van so she can get right into it. I've got a 91-year-old grandmother. My parents have a low riding car so they can get her into it to go to her doctor's appointments. And they spend this. These warmongers like Christina Amanpour that we, quote, don't like women. No, we don't like creepy war criminals that turn over countries to Al-Qaeda and ISIS to murder Christians and blacks because the Arabs are, the Muslim jihadi Arabs are so racist. Can you imagine there was a white group in Libya killing over 30,000 black people? They just kill black people. They don't think they're human. It'd be all over the news if white supremacists had killed tens of thousands of black people. But because it's Muslims doing it, it's like, oh, it's cute when they do it. And Aberdeen's mother writes books about cutting girls' genitals off and is the premier person pushing this? How did I go to sleep and wake up in fruitcake land? We got a bunch of phone calls. We got David and I ready to take over. A fresh, smart pony in this race for liberty. This old horse is getting tired. Got a lot of meetings to go to before I come back with special reports of the nightly news this evening. And the big issue we didn't cover enough today is they're in the media saying she may stand down. She may go away. She may give up. Well, who's going to be in there? We also have the second drudge link. Top Hillary search terms are seizures, brain damage, and her death. So that's going on right now as well. The other big drudge story is they're clearly doing a medical exam on her for neurological issues, a classic one. Uh, on video. So that's up on DrudgeReport.com as well and InfoWars.com and our backup site, PrisonPlanet.com. But because uh, Daria uh, is an amazing American patriot, Army veteran, but she immigrated here from Russia when she was a little kid to seek freedom, while she's here fighting to keep it somewhat free today, she monitors Russian TV for us, both RT, but state run, you name it, Duma, broadcast, uh, you know, Congress type stuff, C SPAN type stuff from Russia. And there's these amazing clips, and I've noticed Americans are fascinated with Russia because they realize we've kind of gone through the same globalist system. They've been occupied, kicked it out, still have problems. It's not some utopia on the other end of globalism. It's just maybe folks that aren't out to get us in government completely. <laughs> That's a big difference. Humanity thrives if just the government isn't out to get you, uh, you know, and, and, and doesn't want to shut down all competition. But, but every few days she comes in with a really important clip 
It's a great asset to have her here. It's a great job putting it together. Uh, and this is Russian news. Will they kill Trump? It's a three-minute, 20-second clip. Russia One is the big state-run TV, and it's the host um, analyzing the threat of assassination. And, folks, we've had the New York Times, the, basically every major publication that's globalist run, call for his death. And believe me, now that they're delusion, because I've talked to people inside the Democratic Party that are high level. We have moles very close to them, okay? But when these people give me intel, they fly here to tell me. Or they send a note with someone they know is coming on. I mean, I get notes is how I get information. And then I take it and shred it. Okay? And we use a service that burns it. That's how the Secret Service got us info. They said, we'll get you something in the next couple of weeks. It took them three weeks. We got it. And it was with a person in person. With code words, the whole nine yards, folks. I mean, that's the level we're living in here, the danger. And long story short... This whole house of cards is coming down, and all they can hope to do is kill Trump. Because we have inside sources that they really believe with their own fake polls a month ago, where they were adding 10 to 15 more percent Democrats in. They were believing that. I was talking to folks at Martha's Vineyard that had big Democrats in their houses with them shooting their mouths off around dinner. That they were really going to trounce Trump, and the polls showed it. And the person said, well, what about Reuters adding 50% more? And they're like, I don't know what that means. These are like prominent Democrats are smoking their own BS. They're believing their own propaganda. And so now they know that's not true. They know Trump's way ahead. They are super dangerous right now. You got to have your video cameras ready. You got to be ready to cover false flags. You may be the person in your town or city that catches them. We got to go towards the crisis when it happens. They can start a war, an economic implosion. The sky is the limit. And the Russians are obviously asking the same question because they know Hillary and the globals are trying to start a war right now because Russia is weak compared to China. Russia has barely gotten out of their hold. They want to pick on Russia because they've got it surrounded and, and infiltrated, just like America's infested and infected by the very same globalist. So we're, we're in the same boat together, the same stew pot. So, so here's Russia wondering what the next shoe to drop is. Here it is. Two important pieces of news regarding Donald Trump. Number one, he is ahead in polls by two points. Number two, Trump declared that if he is president, he aims to have, quote, very good relations with Russia. This combination of Trump's characteristics, his leadership in the presidential race, his ability to speak boldly, his intentions to turn over a new leaf regarding the Russian-American relations, all this puts Trump in a very dangerous situation. Now they can just simply kill him. The intelligence services of the United States are not interested in the type of president Trump vows to be because the contrived enemy in the form of Russia justifies their existence. American elites are not interested in a President Trump as the establishment world order provides them with reliable sources of lucrative business. Trump, on the other hand, who is ready to reach agreements, would bring about a different set of financial opportunities flowing in other directions. The American establishment is merciless. Paul Craig Roberts, former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Economic Policy under President Reagan, has published a guest column on his website back in March by a journalist, Stephen Lenman, who commented on what has become a very popular theme on social media websites. Quote, maybe an unfortunate plane crash, other fatal accident, or mysterious, incurable, fast-acting, deadly illness is planned. Will Trump be gone before Republicans choose their nominee in July, or perhaps before November? November's election. This narrative hasn't stopped, but the current state of the presidential race for Hillary Clinton is such where she has used up all of her available ammunition against Trump. She has an empty holder. Yet there are still almost two months to go until the election. She has already accused Trump of being a Putin agent, that he hates Muslims, Mexicans and blacks, and his wife Melania is unworthy of the title of the first lady, and that Trump himself is simply unfit, and that he's even deranged, and that he understands nothing in the way of the U.S. strategy, nor international affairs and that he's a misogynist. Meanwhile, Trump details his plan of building relations with Russia, 
goes to Mexico, visits a popular black church, defends his wife's honor in court, and sees to his popularity among women. And the result? The scars put on Trump have nearly closed up, but the holes inflicted on Clinton are needing emergency surgery. Her carelessness with handling classified material while Secretary of State, foreign policy that led to terrorist expansion, her avarice and the questionable reputation of foreign donors to the Clinton Foundation, the dirty tricks of the Democratic National Committee favoring one candidate over the other, and finally Hillary's failing health, whether it's her fainting episodes or the coughing fits. So what's the solution? Shoot Trump? The option isn't far-fetched. After all, the United States has boasted of more president shootings than any other country in the world. That's right. That means the criminals have hijacked this country. I, I can find no fault to quote Pontius Pilate with what the Russian TV said. David, I'm going to hand it over to you right now. I want to get your comment because we're going to put this video up. It's going to go viral. Uh, Russians uh, discuss the assassination of Trump. The, 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 uh, the Russians discuss, will the globalists kill Donald Trump? You're taking us to break your comment on this, David Knight. Well, Alex, that, that was exactly right what he had to say. And we talk about, you know, what happens if uh, Hillary as a health issue if Hillary can't make it because we know that she is so desperately ambitious that she is not going to drop out on her own she's she's going to if she's breathing she's going to be running for president but Alex there was something else that came out today as well it was on the uh, Dredge Report Christine Lagarde of the IMF talking about how globalization benefits need to be shared by all but the other part of her comment was that there is a groundswell of discontent and that's really what I want to focus on. I want to focus on what the IMF is, what they are doing, how they embody globalism, and the tactics that they use. She's talking about a, glowing, a growing inequality in wealth, income, and opportunity in many countries is added to a groundswell of discontent. Well, of course it would. And this, Alex, is exactly what we've seen. It's why Tim Kaine is calling you out. It's why Hillary has called you out. People understand what is going on in their life. You can fool them if you've got the politicians and the mainstream media in your pocket. You can make them think that it only affects them. Absolutely. And expanding on that, globalism is about picking winners and losers and making us poor to be controlled. Yes. Any system is better. Yes, It's absolutely. scientific slavery. We're just saying Americana, Renaissance, let's work with countries. Let's not have a war-based economy. Let's be strong. But let's not be based on World War III, and the whole world wants that. David Knight's taking over. I'm Alex Jones. Nally News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Pray for peace worldwide. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Tuesday, September 13th. This is day number 284 since Hillary Clinton has had a real press conference, and I'm not counting the nonsense about the sycophant small group of people that are allowed to ride on the plane. We talk about having leverage over the press. It's like... Uh, uh, what she do if they ask her a bad question? she kick them out without a parachute? I want to talk in this segment that we got. Leanne McAdoo is going to be joining me in the next segment. I want to talk in this segment about uh, Christine Lagarde with the IMF and her comments today about globalization. You see, they can't ignore the fact that you see what's going on. And they can't ignore, just as Tim Kaine called out Alex Jones today, they can't ignore the fact that Alex Jones and Breitbart and, of course, Drudge are getting the information to the public. We know, all of you know, that it's not just your problem. We have to stand collectively to fight for individual liberty. It's something that uh, uh, I've heard before. Uh, it's not my, uh, not my phrase. It was uh, J. Edward Griffin who wrote The Creature from Jekyll Island. It's a great phrase. You need to think about that. It's difficult for those of us who have uh, a, a bent towards individual liberty to think and act collectively. That's our weakness. We have to get over that. We have to understand that we are all in this together. And we have to fight this at certain levels. We have to fight it at the local level, but we also, right now, we have to fight to even keep our nation together. And I want you to hear what she had to say today. It's an acknowledgement of reality. They have to acknowledge this reality. They can no longer just pretend that it doesn't exist. It's like Hillary's fainting spells at 9-11. They have to acknowledge the reality of her health issues. Now, this is a Bloomberg story that you'll see linked on Drudge. World leaders need to better manage the frustration over the failure of globalism to deliver widely shared benefits, she says. This, this is the way Bloomberg would put it. But I want to read you the quote from uh, Lagarde, head of the IMF. She says, growing inequality in wealth, income, and opportunity. Growing inequality in Wealth, income, and opportunity in many countries has led to a 
ground swell of discontent, especially in the industrialized world. And we'll talk about the metrics behind this. A growing sense among some citizens that they need, that they lack control, that the system is somehow against them. Oh, who would we get that idea? Okay. It's not something that we made up. Okay. It is something, it is reality that we are exposing. And she goes on to uh, offer a solution, which really isn't a solution. Understand the tactic here. She comes out, essentially says, like Bill Clinton, I feel your pain. Okay. I understand. Here's the, here's the problem you see. But you have to understand that more of what we're doing that caused this problem is the real solution. We don't need to change course. We need to just continue down the same road that has caused so much pain and dislocation in your society. That's the solution that she offers. She said, history has shown that closing borders and increasing protectionism isn't the solution. She said, instead, countries need to extend the benefits of openness and integration while alleviating the painful side effects. <laughs> well, you know what? It doesn't get alleviated. And here's the way Zero Hedge pointed it out in their uh, story. She warns of groundswell discontent. He says, two months after the consultancy giant McKinsey dramatically flip-flopped on its long-held position of praising globalism, cautioning that as Britain's vote to exit the European Union exemplifies what happens when people feel like the system is letting them down. They said at the time, these consultants, the system is on the verge of explosion. They compared it to a buildup of resentment of globalism. They compared that to a dangerous natural gas leak in a row of houses. You understand? That is what's there. That's this groundswell of discontent. It's like I, you left the gas turned on, and all it's going to take is a spark. Will they set it off? Will they set it off? Okay. That's the question. And then she went on to say this. She said financial institutions are being seen as unaccountable to society. Of course they are. I, we increasingly see HSBC being called too big to jail. That came after they were all, we were told they were too big to fail. After they created a massive bubble with the Republicans and the Democrats all helping them. After Bill Clinton took down the uh, Glass-Steagall Act that prevented them from getting involved in speculative investments. They took that down. So what they do? They created a massive bubble. And even before Glass-Steagall, this is what people need to understand. At the very beginning of the Clinton administration, what did they do? They created the two big to fail banks. The very first merger, and I remember this very clearly because I was in North Carolina at the time, a, a merger between Bank of America and Nations Bank, which was headquartered in Charlotte. And what they did was they moved that uh, Bank of America, which was headquartered in California, to Charlotte, but they took the name Bank of America. And everybody at the time said, this will never get passed. That's what they were all talking about on the business uh, uh, programs. They said, this is not going to pass. It's going to be too big of a merger. It's going to destroy all these small banks. It's going to set off a wave of consolidation that will result in just a couple of giant banks. And that's precisely what it did. Now, one of the reasons that that happened was because of the corruption within the Clinton administration, the people that were on his chief of staff that were also had connections to it. But they go on to say, and this is what McKinsey, this group that is backed off, said 65 to 70 percent of households in the 25 most advanced economies were in income segments that had flat to falling income between 2005 and 2014. Previously, that had only been 2%. In America, 81% of us have flat to falling incomes. In Italy, it's 100%. March. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and joining me in this half hour is Leanne McAdoo. Before we get back to the news, I just want to remind you that ending tonight is the Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine Special. And that's going to be, that is, uh, going to be ending tonight. It's 20% off at InfoWarsLife.com. And, of course, we also still have the Mr. Maddow special at InfoWars.com. <laughs> uh, that's till tonight as well. And uh, the 20% off nascent iodine is part of that. But we also have, in honor of Mr. Ma Rachel Maddow, the 15% off super male vitality <laughs> <laughs> as well as 15% off deep cleanse. Uh, those are products that uh, she promoted for us on her program on MSNBC. So we want to <laughs> thank her for that. We want to offer that to you. Again, 20% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine. 15% off Super Male Vitality, 15% off Deep Cleanse. Go to InfoWarsStore.com. See what those products uh, are about. Read the reviews of people who have actually used them, not Rachel Maddow. She doesn't <laughs> know what she's talking about when it comes to our products. She doesn't know what she's talking about when it comes to Hillary Clinton's health. She certainly can't advise you on your health. But you can do the research <laughs> yourself. You can take a look at the reviews that are at InfoWarsStore.com. 
Those will be ending tonight. So take mm -hmm. advantage of those specials while they last. It's really funny. I had some people uh, tweeting me. They were actually tweeting Rachel Maddow saying, thank you so much for the suggestions on these great products. I'm really <laughs> enjoying them. <laughs> yeah, well, at least she read the names right on the products. Does she and, know uh, who our fans are? They will come after you. <laughs> that, that was absolutely amazing. Well, you know, we're getting called out on a regular basis by a lot of people. As a matter of fact, today we had Tim Kaine call out Alex Jones by name. They understand what is going on. They understand that uh, we know what is happening to us. And just as I was pointing out before the break, Leanne, I was talking about IMF, Christine Lagarde talking about the fact there's this groundswell of resentment. And, of course, what's driving that is the fact that things have been flat or declining for the 25 leading economies. Okay, they are taking down the first world countries down to third world level. That's what the IMF has done across the world. They did this to the third world countries. Uh, back in the 1960s, you had Robert McNamara, the guy who was the mastermind of the Vietnam fiasco management, the way our government managed Vietnam was a fiasco. I think everybody understands that now. He went to uh, the IMF and he was accused of rent seeking because this is not the Marshall Plan. This is not what the government did with uh, the American government did extending money to Europe to help rebuild it after World War II. What they did under Robert McNamara was they went to third world countries. They encouraged them to engage in social welfare programs, essentially consumer borrowing, if you will. OK, this is not a good idea in your personal life. And macroeconomics is a fiction that was created by the Keynesians to try to tell you that the reality that works in your personal life. In other words, borrowing money until you can't see uh, it, that doesn't work for nations either. OK, but the IMF was doing that. And the interesting thing about it, they were, they were criticized for rent-seeking. They want to turn everyone into renters. They don't want you to own anything. They don't want you to have control of anything. We're going to talk about, Leanne's got some information about the Internet, because I think what we see happening with the Internet is another example of how the globalists want to take control of everything. They want to take control of our cars, for example. Ford has said that they're going to have self-driving cars by 2021. But they're not going to let you buy self-driving cars, even if you can afford it, because they're going to be a lot more expensive. Even if you can afford self-driving cars, they're not going to let you buy them until 2025. When they put them out in 2021, they're going to do it like an Uber company, okay, where this is a rental thing. They want to rent you everything. They want to control everything. Now, wow. they're a little bit more clever about it when they do it on an international basis with the IMF fund, because what they do there is they don't take collateral. They don't say, okay, uh, loan us, uh, we're going to loan you this amount of money and we're going to put a mortgage on your roads or on your bridges or something like that. Instead, what they do is they loan the money to these countries, they saddle them with debt, and then they use that debt as leverage to take over the fiscal policies of the countries. And that's precisely what we saw with Greece. Go back one year and take a look at some of these stories. I just selected a couple of them because we report on this extensively as, as uh, many places did. But uh, this story from Paul Joseph Watson back in July of last year. Report, IMF orders U.S. tour operators to withhold payments to Greek hotels, okay? He put out a tweet from somebody that was there. U.S. tour operators withhold payments to Greek hotels for services used by order of the IMF to crush us is their aim. If you don't play along with them, if you don't alter your policies within the country, they will do that to crush you. Then this next story that was uh, June, Michael Schneider, economic collapse, uh, we had it on InfoWars. Does the IMF actually want to cause a Greek debt default? And, of course, the answer to that is yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> that was that was dismissed as a conspiracy theory by a lot of people. But then we go back to April of this year, and guess what? We saw WikiLeaks uh, memos, conversations going back and forth between people who were within the IMF. And, yes, they did plan to cause a credit event in Greece to destabilize Europe. That's the whole point, folks. That's the way they take people down. And that's what they have done in Europe. They take economic control so they can then create destabilization. Once you have destabilization, we were told uh, in Europe with it, to save the EU, they needed sovereign control. They needed to take over the democratic process. That's precisely what we're seeing. So what does it mean, Leanne? When we see them saying that they now want to take over the Internet. And, of course, mm -hmm. Obama gladly wants to play along because he is part of the globalist cabal, the elitist, the multinational corporations. They own him. They own Hillary. They are <laughs> their minions doing this. And so he wants to turn over the Internet to who? Who's he going to turn it over to? 
Right. I mean, that's the thing is people are saying this is really frightening. Why? Why is this his one last push that this is something he's just got to do? I know that this kind of first came about about two years ago, but he's just bound and determined to pass this before he leaves office. Uh, good news is it appears congressional leaders are going to push back against uh, his decision to hand over um, power, the stewardship of the Internet, if you will. Um, basically to the UN because he doesn't have any provisions in place. That's where it's going to end up. And so what's going to happen? Uh, they're basically saying this could be the last um, month of an open, uncensored Internet that's guaranteed by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is frightening. Look at the implications we've already seen. And, and there's a story up on Drudge Now where the tech giants are saying, USA, you've got to hand over control. You just you've got to do this. Give it over to the globalists. It's like. We've I think already that's seen how we've seen how Apple has already allowed China to dictate how it's going to uh, agree to the censorship there with the government. And I Google. think that's the key. That story that's on Drudge about the tech giants putting the pressure on, saying you've got to do this now. We have to understand the IMF is not the UN. They operate under the UN. We have to understand that if they take over, they they keep saying, "Well, we're going to put it under the United Nations." You know, all these countries are going to have some kind of democratic control. They like to talk about it being under the UN to create the illusion of democratic control, but that's not the case. Just as we see with the IMF, it is anti-democratic. It is anti-national. We've seen the IMF taking out uh, elected people in Greece and Italy. It was Nigel Farage who said, who are you to take out these democratically elected leaders and put in Goldman Sachs bankers? You know, who made you God to do this? That's what we're gonna wind up seeing with the, with the internet. The Internet, people need to understand, this is not a point of nationalistic pride. And I think that's the danger. A lot of people are approaching it that way and say, hey, this is something that's America. You know, America's great. We don't need to give up the Internet. Right. Okay, if you take it from that standpoint, if your understanding of this is that shallow, we will lose because people don't really care about that. What you have to understand, this is a power grab along the lines of the Trans-Pacific, the Transatlantic Partnerships, NAFTA, and these other things, where you're going to have you, those... Uh, particular trade agreements, they're treaties, but they call them something else so they don't have to follow the constitutional process for a treaty. The point of those is to establish a regime, a committee that will not just manage trade, but manage our economy, manage all these different countries' economies. Why are they lo losing in this information battle? Why is there this groundswell of anger everywhere? It's because they don't control information. The internet is their key to controlling information. Who wants to control it? It's the multinational corporations, Silicon Valley, this story about this. They say, well, there's this consortium of businesses who would like to uh, have the government turn this over. That's the question everybody ought to be asking. Who are we turning this over to? Right. Who are these shadow figures that we're turning this over to? That's the central question of the Trans-Pacific Transatlantic Partnership. Who are these people that we are turning over control of all of our economies to that we have absolutely no control over them? We don't even know who these people are. It's just like the Federal Reserve. How many people knew that we had a Greek yogurt billionaire who's not even an American citizen sitting on the Federal Reserve Board determining what economic policy is here in America? That's the way that all this stuff is going to work. Right. And then, of course, let's take into consideration that Obama is really pushing back against this bill that's going to allow the uh, families of the victims of 9-11 to sue Saudi Arabia. And he's pushing back against this, saying, no, we can't do that. That's going to open the door for people to start suing the U.S. government for the things that we are doing. And it's kind of like, well, yeah, you guys are terrorists, but at the same time, uh, that's exactly what the Trans-Pacific Partnership is going to do. It's going to allow these uh, independent international tribunals <laughs> to override sovereignty of nations and we've seen how it operates because it's been happening with nafta they come in and say hey you know you did some new rules and regulations that's cut our profits down so we go to a tribunal and this tribunal says yeah i think we're going to keep their profits up and we're going to award them billions of dollars we've seen it happen over and over again so we know precisely how that mechanism is going to work they're taking it to a global scale that's right. the issue yeah so he's not worried about you know is an independent party coming in and overriding the constitutional laws that we have here. Mm -hmm. He's worried about himself uh, being charged for war crimes, for uh, taking out innocent civilians there with his drone strikes, yeah. uh, among yeah. a myriad of other things. Yeah, and, and he should be worried if uh, we had any kind of um, real justice in this country, if we hadn't had the uh, Justice Department and the FBI totally co-opted uh, by politicians, that he should be worried about uh, felony violations for sending plane loads of cash, quite literally. I mean, this is like a yeah. Mena, Arkansas drug deal that he did with Iran. And uh, 
you know, they 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 kind of masked it for a while, talking about the fact, well, is it ransom? Is it you know? And it obviously was ransom. But the key issue was that he violated all the legal prohibitions. He cr he committed a felony when he sent that money to Iran. Whether it was ransom or not, he committed a felony. And then right. we find out that it's far more extensive than that. That it's not just the four hundred million. It's not even just the one point seven million. There's even more money involved in that. And they just keep doubling down on the criminality. And getting yeah. away with it. Yes, and of course we know that he is going to excuse himself, whoever he gets in next. I mean, perhaps Donald Trump will will go after Obama, but usually what we see is that the presidents who get in, they excuse everyone for the crimes they've done. Uh, now it looks like Drudge has an article up that's saying that John Kerry is basically doing the same thing Hillary Clinton did mm -hmm. as Secretary mm -hmm. of State. He's now funneling money into his daughter's foundation. I have so that article they, right here. It's amazing. They learn from their predecessor. This is the situation. First, the Peace Corps uh, awarded money to a group that was uh, John Kerry's daughter's group that was back in 2012 while Hillary Clinton was still Secretary of State, gave her a three-year contract worth $2 million. Then after Kerry became Secretary of State, they gave them a four-year extension without competition. That's the key. Uh, Every, where are the Democrats? You know, there's all that rightful concern about how uh, all these Iraq uh, contracts are being awarded to rebuild that country uh, without competition. Without competition. But here we got the same situation being done to this uh, group that John Kerry's daughter runs. $6.4 million awarded without competition. And then they went back and doubled down. They gave an additional million dollars for the first contract. So they went back and raised it by 50%. The first contract that had been negotiated before he became Secretary of State. Then they uh, doubled down on that. Went from They changed it from $2 million to $3 million. Then they doubled down and made it $6 million for the next uh, few years. This is the kind of corruption that is systemic in the American government. Right. You know, we just had an article from Politico, of all people. I mean, they, they love the Clintons. They love the Democrats. They were comparing... Comey, the FBI director, to J. Edgar Hoover. That's not a good thing when people start comparing <laughs> you to J. Edgar Hoover. If you don't know the history of J. Edgar Hoover and the corruption of that guy, as they say in the article, people ask him, why, why don't you fire J. Edgar Hoover with all the abuses that he's had and everything? He goes, well, you don't fire God. <laughs> okay? Wow. And that's the way the guy operated. Yeah. And they're comparing Comey to him. Now, you have to understand, Comey comes from one of these corrupt banks, HSBC, that is been convicted multiple times of money laundering, money laundering for drug cartels and for terrorists and given a pass. Why is that? Okay, why have they been given a pass? Too big to jail. Well, because uh, Comey and Loretta Lynch, they all worked together at a law firm that used to do Hillary Clinton's taxes, and they're right. still covering for her. <laughs> yeah, why was Hillary Clinton allowed to give her testimony uh, not under oath? And, and then they release it there on a weekend when they know most of America isn't going to talk about it, and the media won't really cover it as well. Yeah. Thank goodness we're here, but that's, that's the whole issue with giving up uh, the Internet and guaranteeing by the U.S. Constitution that you know we believe in free speech, um, the freedom of speech, we want to protect it, and now you just want to throw that away. And that's what people don't understand, what, what makes America so great, and that they're trying to destroy from within. And that's the key thing. Look, what, what would J. Edgar Hoover have done to a news organization that covered his corruption? What would he have done? Hmm. He would have shut them down. He would have gone to his friends in the federal government, and he would have shut them down using broadcast licenses or whatever, okay? Right. And so it wouldn't have happened. Now, this is why the government wants to take over the Internet, because they don't have any lovers of control over the Internet yet. yet. That's why they have to have that, because we can talk about what's going on. We can expose this corruption, unlike the closely controlled media that was around at the time of J. Edgar Hoover. We don't want more J. Edgar Hoovers. We don't want somebody like Comey, who was on the board of HSBC, who worked for the Clintons forever. He... Uh, let uh, Sandy Berger go for doing essentially the same thing that Hillary Clinton is doing, stealing stuff, destroying records that would have harmed them. Uh, he did it in a physical way, which he did later electronically on a far larger scale. But, of course, she also gave those secrets at the same time to foreign governments, which is something that even Sandy Berger didn't do. But it was Loretta Lynch and Comey who let Sandy Berger go. They were both wow. uh, prosecutors on that. So we see the same pattern of corruption, the minions that they have, permeating the government that they have brought in. This is why I don't think Hillary is going to be taken out. She's got too many secrets right. on too many. She's the J. Edgar Hoover, if you really want to know what's going on. Yeah. She, she, the Clintons are the, and the Bushes uh, together, they're the J. Edgar Hoovers. 
they've got the secrets on everybody, these two crime families, and nobody's going to get her out of there as long as she's breathing. I don't think she's going to. No, I agree. I, I agree. The Clintons have a lot of dirt on a lot of people, and that's why they don't want to dig into the Clinton Foundation, because it's going to take a lot of people down with them. And, you know, you really... The mainstream media is probably salivating at the idea that the Internet is going to be censored now and closed because then they can maintain their monopoly on information that they've enjoyed for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they want to see the alternative media go by the wayside. And it's interesting, too, when we look at this, this Kerry situation, again, at the State Department. And what do they do? They filter money to their family mm -hmm. through nonprofits and charities. So we can't say anything uh, bad about uh, the Seed Global Health Organization uh, that's under the Peace Corps. I mean, it's so, so nice to have something like that. You know, Isn't you just that, uh, can't Henry say anything Kissinger's bad about this. NSSM Memorandum uh, 200 talks a lot about that. That's, that's how they go in and they keep these countries third world. They steal all of their money but uh, and all of their resources and things. But... They'll give them a little bit of aid if they mm -hmm. agree to mm -hmm. uh, ge uh, the eugenics plan. Well, that's the way the federal <laughs> government works as well. Okay, they become yeah. Santa Claus. We'll be right back. David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. Stay with us. We've got one more segment on the program. We've got a lot more news to cover. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. This is our last segment. And in this segment, I want you to understand tonight we have an end to a lot of very big specials that we've been running for a while. Of course, there's our mega specials on preparedness. That's going to be ending tonight at our InfoWarsStore.com. 30 to 40% off all InfoWars Select Storable Food. That ends tonight. 30 to 40% off. That's a huge discount off of InfoWars Select Storable Food. This is non-GMO food. It has a 25-year shelf life. It has It's all made and packaged in the United States, as well as resealable. Once you open this up, you can reseal it for a uh, to, to be able to preserve it for a little bit extended time, but once you keep that sealed, it is good for 25 years without preservatives, without GMOs. Also, 20% off Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, 20% off Alexa Pure air filters, and 20% off Alexa Pure water filters. All that will be ending tonight, as well as the Mr. Rachel Maddow specials. Again, 20% off Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, 15% off Survival Male Vitality, and 15% off Deep Cleanse. All of those. Uh, preparedness mega specials at InfoWarsStore.com, as well as the other products that we did in honor of Rachel Maddow's plugging our products the other day on her show <laughs> at InfoWarsLife.com. Those are all going to be ending tonight. So this is the last day that you'll be able to take advantage of those specials. So we thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting us. And we try to offer the very best products we can to support your health. We're serious about this. We do the best we can to offer you the best quality products, and we really do appreciate your support. That's how we fund our organization, not like MSNBC. We don't take money from Big Pharma. We don't take money from the government. We try to offer you in a capitalist kind of way. <laughs> it's a win-win situation, as Alex Jones says, a 360 win. Mm. Uh, you've got a story about what's going on with sugar and the way that they right. manipulate uh, the information. Yeah, you can't, about it. can't trust Rachel Maddow to tell you about Hillary Clinton's health. <laughs> and so truly, you can't trust a lot of even researchers out there. The science says, well, here now it's been revealed just this week in the JAMA Internal Medicine, uh, the journal. They released uh, some research from the 60s that show that Harvard researchers had been bribed um, by the sugar <laughs> industry to say, that heart disease was actually caused more so by fat, not sugar. So this is heart disease. It's like the top killer in the United States. But in order to protect the sugar industry, they recommissioned a new review of this research to say that it was fat, not sugar. And then, of course, we've just seen sugar um, catapult into every single meal that's out there, especially for mm -hmm. children, since the 60s. I mean, so then you wonder why heart disease could be the top killer. I mean, this just shockwaves through the research community. Well, you know, we saw back in the 1960s, we saw doctors cutting commercials for tobacco companies mm -hmm. saying, you know, I, I can't even remember the commercials. Uh, more doctors prefer this brand over brand X, you know, it's right. like all these smoking doctors and everything. <laughs> this one will kill uh, you quicker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, quite frankly, I mean, it was, uh, they accelerated the unhealthy situation with it by the things that they added to it. All these filters and menthols and all these other chemicals that they added to tobacco uh, made it a lot more dangerous than it had ever been. 
But yeah, we see that all the time, and we, I, I guess, what's happening now, because there's a big campaign to, uh, there we go, there's the doctors. Uh, the cigarette, uh, preferred the cigarette. by doctors. Yeah, this is this is the healthy cigarette. Uh, yeah, we can talk to uh, John Wayne, and I uh, wish we could yeah. talk to John Wayne about that, unfortunately we can't. Uh, but um, yeah, that's what we see over and over again, is, uh, and I, I guess what's happened now, that sugar has become the ultimate demon. Of course, the issue is not even fat or sugar. It's obesity. Right. Okay. And that, that has a lot of different factors. It's very complex. But uh, they use the government. They have regulatory capture. It's not just uh, uh, universities that are captured by this stuff. Uh, we see this happening all the time. But I guess the sugar industry didn't pay up for their political protection. That's why right. Obama and the rest of them are coming after it. Finally, it'll be declassified. That's right. And you're going to be doing the InfoWars Nightly News tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Join Leanne McAdoo. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. That's it for today's broadcast.